Phillies, 1996 second round pick, born and raised in Oakland, California, arrived to the big league stage in 2000 and was a definite sign of the team's future with high expectations. To what level is never known, and what was ahead for Jimmy Rollins could never have been anticipated. A three time All Star, four gold gloves, the 2007 National League MVP, and the franchise's first world championship in 28 seasons were sparked by J Roll as he helped those Phillies teams become the team to beat. Saying goodbye wasn't easy, and now we say hello once again to the greatest shortstop and all time hits leader in Phillies history. Philadelphia nobody drew a crowd better than Jimmy Rollins and today here at Dodger Stadium he certainly grew a crowd not only the crowd from the Philadelphia media but also the crowd from the Los Angeles Dodgers media as the Phillies get set to take on the Dodgers in game one of a four game series here in Southern California. Hi everybody, I'm Tom McCarthy. Looks who we found out here in California. He looks like a California guy. Ben Davis joins us out here in Los Angeles. All right, Ben. So we see Jimmy Rollins for the first time since the end of last season wearing Dodger blue tonight. And he says he hasn't thought about this reunion of sorts, I guess you could say, but I know he has. He spent so much time with the Phillies, what he meant to the Phillies organization, especially this last run that they've had. He was my favorite Philly in this in this era, and he produced a lot of championships and the World One World Series in 2008. All right, let's take a look at Jimmy's resume in case you have forgotten his career, which began when the Phillies drafted him back in 1996, a small switch hitting shortstop. They took a chance on him, and he certainly paid off. Made his major league debut in 2000. He went on to perform in three All-Star games in the Phil's uniform. Of course, the 2007 National League MVP, four-time Gold Glove winner. And from a team standpoint, the pinnacle was the 2008 World Championship. From an individual standpoint, it was when he eclipsed Mike Schmidt with career hit number 2,235. And then, yes, on December 19th, the Phillies traded him to the Los Angeles Dodgers. Some amazing moments for Jimmy Rollins. Some amazing moments. You're absolutely right. But Jimmy was the consummate ball player. When I say that, there's so many different ways in which Jimmy could beat you. He could beat with his wheels, his glove, and his bat. Whether that be for average or for power, yes, he did talk a good game, but he backed it up. And the bottom line is Jimmy Rollins won. Well, this was one of the best days of 2014 for anybody in the franchise. It's when Jimmy did become the franchise's hits leader. When he arrived at first base, he was greeted by the guy he passed who was extremely happy that he would pass the baton or a bat in this case to Jimmy Rollins and that of course is Mike Schmidt. So Jimmy in his standing with the bill since 2000 games played over 2000 lifetime average 267 as Ben said he hit for power 216 home runs a three time all star the list goes on and on and yes we had a chance to catch up with him as earlier today Murph sat down with Jimmy Rollins. All right, thank you very much, Tom. Uh, I'm sure you remember this guy. Uh, more hits than anybody else in a Philadelphia Phillies uniform, Jimmy Rollins. It is good to see you. Uh, it's been a couple of months since you've been putting on this uniform, but for the first time in your career, you're going to see the Phillies uh, opposite of you tonight. Uh, what, what are the emotions? What are the thoughts that go through your head as you get ready for a series like this? Um, honestly, I haven't had a lot uh, of emotions or thoughts about it. That's just, just being honest. There's enough going on here. Uh, to keep me occupied, which is a good thing. Um, I'm sure it'll be different once I get to Philadelphia and I'm in the city and I see the stadium. But uh, having the first part of it uh, happen here, I'm, I'm sure it's a lot easier. But um, when the game starts, they're trying to get me out, and I'm trying to get it. That's the way it works in this game. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, the adjustment for you. Uh, you know, you spend that much, uh, you know, a decade and a half or even more with one organization, and then you make the switch and you come out here to L.A. and uh, you hit the ground running. Uh, how has the adjustment been for you? Uh, more difficult than you thought? Easier than you thought? Um, it's, it's been pretty easy, uh, honestly, but I think in a lot of ways um, it's been more challenging than I've ever thought. Um, you know, being somewhere half your life, literally, uh, you don't have to think about certain things, finding housing, um, you know, things to do for your family understanding that whoa these are new team teammates you know but we don't have the memories we don't have the stories those are all things that you have to figure out and learn and make and create 
uh, when you adjust to a new team. So the, the good thing is I, I landed at a place where I wanted to be. Um, if I had to leave, you know, I told Ruben if we get to L.A., you know, we can get a deal done. And he made it happen, so I'm very thankful for that. And that's been, you know, the easiest part of it. I didn't just go somewhere where, you know, the deal best uh, or fit best uh, for the Phillies and the Dodgers. I went to a place where it fit and a place I wanted to be. When you when you think about and and I know you keep at least one eye uh, back on Philadelphia and and you know what's what's the team's been going through this year a change in leadership both uh, in the dugout and and upstairs as well uh, that is coming with Andy McPhail coming on board. What are your thoughts as you as you see the Phillies the you know make the transition? It's been a it's been a difficult time for them obviously. Yeah, it has been. Um, you know, I, I think more about you know the players. You know, Chase and Ryan, uh, Cole and Chooch who were there. You know, in a prime time and what they're probably feeling like, what they're going through. Other than that, um, you know, of course, I send them a text, you know, see what's going on. Sometimes they text right back. Sometimes it takes a couple of weeks, but... Uh, that's Chase. <laughs> that's Chase. <laughs> but, um, you know, honestly, I, I see it, and, you know, I, I don't really have an opinion on it. It, it is what it is, you know. Um, it's that, that part of his business, I can't really, you know, concern myself what's going on in Philadelphia because... I am here in Los Angeles, and this is my team, and this is where, you know, I'm, I've, I've been brought to help win a championship. But um, I, I am aware of what's going on, obviously, because I have a lot of friends over there. And unfortunately, you know, this team is, is, is going through a rebuilding situation. It was kind of, you know, reminds me of what it was when I first got drafted in 1996, where the organization was. And eventually we stockpiled the minor league system. We all made it up at the top, and we had a great run. So. Hopefully, uh, for an organization stake, that's what's happening. You know, they unfortunately you get the stockpile of the minor leagues, yeah. uh, but um, it had been depleted through trades and other things. But there's a chance to stockpile, get some high draft picks, and get all these kids up at the same time and go on another run. All right. Before I let you go, uh, folks back home probably want to know just how you're doing, how the family's doing, and 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 uh, how you know the family's out here with with you, right? Yes, everybody's here. They're great. Uh, Cameron is three. Logan is 15 months. Cameron actually had a, a photo shoot with uh, Bonnie Clark, who's uh, some type of president over there. Uh, I know what she is. I know what she does. I just can't think of her title right now. Her sister has a clothing line, and Cameron had a photo shoot today cool. down in uh, Venice. And Logan is just taking it all in, um, learning how to talk from her sister, learning how to dance from her sister. Uh, she probably looks like me, acts like me, but she gets all the pretty from her mom. <laughs> well, that certainly... That certainly is a good thing. Uh, traffic worse in Philadelphia or here on the 405? Oh, it's not even close. <laughs> um, you know, I started out actually living in Brentwood, and Mondays were great. Mondays, you leave by 2 o'clock, you're absolutely fantastic. Sundays, you're pretty much good at any time. Tuesday through Saturday, though, oh, my goodness. And now I'm in Beverly Hills, so I've learned to avoid the highways. Okay. And I take all streets, and I get here in about 30, 35 minutes, which was about my same drive time from Philadelphia, except for this is on like 14 miles, yeah. and I live 33 miles away out there. It is quite a different feel. Well, Jimmy, uh, we certainly wish you the best of luck uh, the rest of the season. It's good to see you, and uh, good to talk to you as well. Thanks, Mark. All right, Tom, let's send it back upstairs to you. All right, Murph, thank you very much. We appreciate that. Now we get set for baseball. Yimi Garcia for the Dodgers, Sean O'Sullivan for the Phils. Lineups at first pitch when we return.
box. He just had a, a little laugh with Juan Samuel, who was standing basically on the first base bag while Jimmy was trying to throw over to Adrian Gonzalez. First time we'll see Jimmy this year, first of seven games that we'll see Jimmy. Let's take a look at the Phillies lineup. It's brought to you by Xfinity, the official entertainment provider of the Philadelphia Phillies. Revere Hernandez and Franco followed by Howard Ruiz and Ashy. In the bottom third of Freddie Galvez, Soldubo Herrera, and Sean O'Sullivan. Starting pitcher tonight is Yimi Garcia. We'll tell you about him in a little bit. He's 24 years old. Three and two with an ERA of 3.82. This is a spot start for him. First pitch is outside. So we're underway and it's one ball and no strikes. These are his numbers in the big leagues. He is basically a relief pitcher. But they needed somebody to start tonight's ball game. So he's going to start. And then they'll do bullpen by committee after that. On the outside corner one ball one strike. Now as we take a look at the scouting report on Yimmy Garcia 92 to 95. This is his first career major league start. So he had a, you know, a little bit of time to prepare for this mentally uh, change in slider. So three pitch pitcher. That's pretty much what they are out of the bullpen. That one's pulled through the hole on the right side. So Ben Revere greets him with a leadoff single. Ben is now hitting six straight. Starting tonight after being off the last couple days because of a sore hamstring. So while he stands at first, Hernandez comes to the plate, and Ben, it's time for our Nissan keys to the game. And my keys to the game are wear out Johnny Holstaff. As we said, this will be a bullpen game for the Dodgers. So Johnny Holstaff is another term we use as pretty much everybody's going to throw for them. And Cesar, Cesar, Cesar. Cesar Hernandez has been very hot, so hopefully he can keep it going and, and be that guy at the top of the lineup. Well, here is Cesar Hernandez, who's hit in 10 consecutive games. Not too shabby. Swing and a miss. Revere started but stopped. And it's no balls in one strike. Ben has stolen 19 bases, been caught five times. I honestly didn't think he would even try to steal because of the hamstring, but he said he felt better today. A lot of treatments leading up to this start. Well, that fl five hour flight last night probably helped out with. <laughs> That's where he did some of his treatment. That's right. You know, Smarty Grandal, pretty good catcher behind the plate. Inside, one ball, one strike. Ben, I don't know if you know this or not, but since we last saw you, Cesar Hernandez has become a totally different player. Really? He is a contributor in a big way at the top of the order. It has been a while, Tom. Over to first base, Revere short lead, almost dove back past the bag. Yeah, Cesar hitting 299, six for 12 in the series against the Braves. Pete was asked today about the uh, the All Star Game representative, and obviously Jonathan Papelbon is the rep for the Phils, as everybody knows by now. That one's hit sharply back toward the middle, base hit under the glove of Kendrick. So it's an 11 game hitting streak now for Cesar Hernandez. And his average is now over 300. Well, we know about the good at bats that he has put together. And now it just seems like the ball's really coming off his bat crisply. I mean, he's just hitting balls hard. You take a look at his swing here. What I like is there's just not a whole lot of wasted motion. Not trying to do too much. Now, if he really tries to go out and, and juice that baseball, he's probably going to ro roll that ball over to second base, but he stays within it and drives it up the middle. Well, it puts runners on first and second. He is the leading hits. He's the leader in hits in Major League Baseball, not just the National League, but in Major League Baseball since the 21st of June. Here's Michael Franco, who was four for 12 in the series against the Braves. Side one ball, no strikes. Good luck at McDonald's Phillies home run jackpot contestant is Dolores Ramsdale of Langhorn. Phillies hit a home run in today's ball game. Then Dolores will win three hundred dollars. Good luck, Dolores. Did you walk around the Delaware Valley wishing people luck while you were away for thirteen <laughs> days? <laughs> Outside two and zero. Oh. You know, being in a ballpark like this, I hope someone like Michael Franco can really appreciate you know, the, the history of this ball game, but just what a privilege it is to play at a cathedral like Dodger Stadium. It is beautiful, and it always has been. We're talking about keeping a place up. 
and taking care of it since the 60s. So we get a miss two and one. Murph, I know you talked to Franco about these ballparks and also playing here at Dodger Stadium. Yeah, you know, I caught him coming out of the clubhouse for the first time. I was coming back down the steps, and uh, he was kind of taking it all in. I said, uh, Michael, first time here, right? And he said, yeah. So what do you think? He looked around. He said, pretty special. No doubt about it. Pretty special. So he gets it. He, you know, he felt that way when he arrived at Yankee Stadium. We talked about it then. And uh, when he got here to Dodger Stadium, he realized, uh, you know, just how special it can be. That ball suit well out towards center field. Peterson is out toward the edge of the track. The runners tag up. And both are going up to an extra base. Now Hernandez stops, which is a good thing. And then I'll keep runners, uh, two runners on base, but now runners on first and third with one man down. First baseman, number six. Ryan well, obviously, Howard. Cesar would have made it the way the throw was, was angling, but. There was a lot on that throw from Jock Peterson. There was, and you just do not want to risk that in that situation right there. You're going to get the guy to third base. Ben Revere, that's a given. But now you have your cleanup hitter, and you know you still keep that shift pretty much, not to where they usually play, Ryan Howard. And there's still going to be three on that side, but not as drastic. Yeah, they won't be as deep. Kendrick won't be in shallow right field, which should open things up a little bit for Howard. Howard overall 217 with 13 homers, 38 runs batted in. Low, want to know? After Garcia, and we're not sure how long he'll go. Don Mattingly really wasn't sure how long he would go. It looks like it will be left-hander Eric Surkamp. In fact, he was originally looked listed as the starter after uh, Frias was put on the DL. And that's who I told Ryan Howard if they were getting tonight was a lefty. Yeah, you lied to <laughs> Ryan Howard. You're getting coffee. Before heading over the ballpark. And I saw him back in the clubhouse. I said, Sorry, dude, I gave you the wrong scouting report. He goes, No big deal. One ball, no strikes to Howard. There goes Hernandez. Pitches take it inside. No throw. And another stolen base for Cesar. His 12th of the year. And that puts runners on second and third. Great jump here. I think Grandel came up thinking. Who am I throwing this to? Because they have that shift on, and Jimmy playing on the other side of second base. I can throw a catcher off. Two balls, no strikes to Howard. The pitcher's out of the strike zone. It's now two and one. I would think the lefties are licking their chops with this guy out on the mound. Any pitch jammed him. Anytime you have a, a starter that's only a three pitch pitcher, usually starters will always have four pitches. But if you have a guy like Cole Hamels will throw five different pitches, but you got to throw three, it's just one extra pitch you can eliminate. Obviously, the, the odds go down. If there's some pitch that he's really going to a lot, you can look for that pitch. Two balls, two strikes to Howard. Runners lead off second and third. It's a piece of it. We appreciate all the late night viewers back in the Delaware Valley watching this game tonight. Almost 20 after 10. Ryan was able to get in with good hitters counting 2 0, but this guy, Yimi Garcia, just kept riding that hard riding fastball and said, Here you go. I'm going to challenge you if you can hit it. Great. Well, the first two lefties got good swings against him, and then the righty, Mike Calfranco. Lefties, though, are just 5 for 39, now 5 for 40 against Yimi Garcia. 
Right handers though hitting 247 against him. Here's Carlos Ruiz. Carlos had seven hits and 18 at bats against the Dodgers last year. Takes high. Depending on how long he stays in the ball game, you can see he threw a couple of sloppy breaking balls to Franco. That one, that first pitch to Chooch was sloppy. So you can, I'd say right now, eliminate that pitch altogether. There's a strike and it's one and one. Pete McCannon, two wins under his belt since taking over for Ryan Sandberg. They won yesterday in extra innings. To right field, it's going to be right at Puig, and the Phillies strand two in scoring position. No runs, two hits, and two men left here in the top of the first. We go to the bottom of the first. Sean O'Sullivan will go to work. Positive checking. Keeping things simple is helping you bank better. Buy Xfinity, the official entertainment provider of the Philadelphia Phillies. Buy Toyota. Where will Toyota take you? Visit buyatoyota.com to find out. Toyota, let's go places. And buy Independence Blue Cross. Live fearless. Learn more at ibx.com. Well, the traffic, as Jimmy Rollins told us, is a little heavier out here than back home in the Delaware Valley. We experienced that today on our ride over from our hotel. It took a little over an hour. Let's take a look at the Dodgers starting lineup. It's brought to you by Xfinity, the official entertainment provider of the Philadelphia Phillies. Peterson, Kendrick, and Turner, followed by Gonzalez, Grandal, and Puig. And the bottom third of Andre Ethier, Yimi Garcia bats eight, and Jimmy Rollins bats ninth. There's Sean O'Sullivan, a Southern California native. He was born in San Diego. Grew up uh, not too far from San Diego, California. One and six with a 5.76 ERA. And the first batter he'll face is Jock Peterson, and the first pitch is a strike. Peterson, Chris Bryant, Michael Franco. Those are the names you'll probably have to remember when thinking about voting for the National League Rookie of the Year. That one's popped up foul. It's 0 and 2. Peterson with 20 home runs and 38 RBIs. Then it's the most home runs by a rookie, as you see O'Sullivan scouting report, since Dave Kingman hit 21 home runs before the All Star break. He can boogie whip. But we take a look at the scouting report. He'll hit 90, 91, throws five pitches, curve, slider, splitter, and change. And this has got to be a big thrill for him. And being an El Cajon native, starting here at Dodger Stadium. I still like to say Chavez Ravine. You can say it, just mix it in every once okay. in a while. Right. Inside, two and two. Talking with Jeff Frank Corder today, and he goes, he goes, you got a minute? I said, yeah, what do you got? He goes, come sit down and watch this tape. So he and Chase were watching all 20 of Jock Peterson's home runs. <laughs> and it was like, he's like, what do you think of this one? And he's hitting some moonshots. Well, that's a moonshot, but it's going to stop out at shortstop. Freddie Galvis is there. There's one away. Chase Utley is with the team on this trip out to Southern California. 
Second base school, number 47. Two miles away in UCLA, of course. But to hear Chase, no, Chase isn't very vocal. But the way he was talking about Peterson, and he goes, watch where this one goes. And the next one, watch where this one goes. The two of them were very impressed about, you know, the bat speed and the and the backspin that he can create. I think he swings, I mean, honestly, like Bryce Harper. Bryce Harper swings hard. And he's not big. Howie Kendrick slices that one the other way. Ben Revere on the run. He dives. He can't get it. It's going to be loose on the corner. Howie Kendrick's going to get at least three out of this one. Fortunately, Kendrick doesn't run as well as he used to, so he'll stop at third. A one out triple. Second triple of the year for Kendrick. I thought Ben had a chance at this for a quick minute. Third base at number 10, Justin Turner. Route maybe could have been a little more direct. Seems like he got a little loopy with that with that route. It's not a bad time to dive. You know, I know you got you know, three, four, five coming up, but hey, it's the first inning. If you, need, if you think you can get to it, you know, make the effort. I have no problem with that. Pete McCannum's going to go out to make sure that Ben Revere, I believe that Ben Revere's okay. I don't think there's anything that they can review. That was a fair ball. No, that's what they were going to do. They were going to see if that was a fair ball or not. It was fair. I agree with you, though, Ben. I think the, the route could have been a little tighter for Revere. Take a look again down the right field line. He's looping and now he comes in. Well, he started going towards the warning track down the line, then he you know goes towards more of the line. You know, I think if he makes a B line on the straight line, I think he catches that baseball. Well, here's Justin Turner who's having a surprisingly good year, hitting 312. Infield is back, and it's one ball and no strikes. You know the other thing they could have been wondering if a fan interfered with that ball. Yeah. Because there were two hands reaching over, and we kind of lost it with that shot. But the umpire was there. And that is a very short wall. That one's looped out toward right field. Here comes Revere. He's going to get to it. Kendrick tags. He's coming home. The throw to the plate is on one hop. He is safe at home plate. Back fly, the Dodgers lead it one nothing. Just a smidgen up the right field line. Otherwise, you know, Ben Revere gets behind that baseball very well. And again, this looks like one of those plays First where Chooch wants to take the line away, yeah. like he used to do so well. But he does get in there. But it's just a hair up that first base line, and that was enabled Kendrick to score. Well, good call, too, by the home plate umpire, Manny Gonzalez. So Kendrick scores. That's the 39th run he has scored this year. Here's Adrian Gonzalez. Gonzalez hitting 291 with 15 home runs, 50 runs batted in. That ball's hit well. It's not coming back either. So much for a sore right hand for Adrian Gonzalez. 16th home run, 51st RBI. It's 2 0. Dodgers here in the bottom of the first inning. And Ben, this first inning problem continues for the Phillies pitchers. 69 first inning runs allowed this year. And it continues to plague down. We saw this all last year with Kyle Kendrick. And this is a lineup these guys like to swing the bats. And yes, it's a problem that has plagued the Phillies all season long. And once you have to start getting in that bullpen early, it, it's just very detrimental to the ball club. Two outs, two in. Yes, Monty Grandal, the batter. Off speed pitch, it's a strike, it's 0 1.
Grandal hitting 273 left handed overall 271. 12 home runs 31 runs batted in. They acquired him from the San Diego Padres. In the Matt Kemp trade. Outside and it's two balls two strikes. The Dodgers very fortunate to have Grandal and the fact that you know, AJ Ellis is pretty much only there to catch Clayton Kershaw. And he doesn't provide a whole lot offensively. So to have Grandel in the lineup and be able to play four out of every five days has really helped this ball club. Runs out to left field. Cody Ashey's there. And the side is retired. But the damage is done. The Dodgers score two runs in the inning. One on the sack fly, the other on a home run by Gonzalez. We head to the second. It's two nothing. Dodgers on top. And now resorts and spas a free magnetic photo frame for all fans coming to the game tickets can be purchased by going to Phillies.com. You want to make sure you're there uh, because access to the field begins at 505 and then photos from 540 till 610. Well the Dodgers have struck first with two in their half of the first inning. Jimmy Rollins is not the only uh, Philly that is. Landed here in Southern California. Look in the crowd. There's a lot of red sprinkled into this Dodger blue. All right, so two runs in the first. That's something the Phillies have dealt with all year. But this is probably a guy that they can get some runs against. His career high in pitches is 33, and he's thrown 19. We threw 19 in the first inning. Cody Ashey leads it off. Take strike one. Probably 69 runs allowed first in Major League Baseball. So first out of 30 teams. Shockingly, though, it's not too far ahead of the number two team, the Chicago White Sox. And Pete knows it. He knows it. Ryan Sandberg knew it. Bob McClure certainly does. Larry Boa talked to us about it today. One ball, one strike. One ball and two strikes to Cody Ashey. Average of 248 with four home runs, 11 runs batted in. Just a funky windup. Really hides the ball well. That pitch only at 92, but just really short arms and hides it well. Seems like it comes right out of his ear. That one's pulled into right. It'll be a base hit for Ashey. Good piece of hitting. Third hit for the Phils. During the 2015 season, Turkey Hill, the official ice cream of the Phillies, stop, will contribute $100 Brady for each Phillies victory and five cents for each carton of Phillies Grand Slam ice cream sold to support the Phillies youth baseball and softball programs. 
And take a look at his de delivery. Well, he swings that leg back, but you see right there, he just hides the ball, and it just seems like it comes right out of his ear. Kind of like Aaron Harang, but a little more velocity. Well, he comes from Mocha in the Dominican Republic. It's a place that not many baseball scouts have ever gone to. And the only way that he was noticed is they had to send him to a tryout in uh, Bonnie, which is closer to the big city, San Pedro de Macaris. There's only one other major leaguer, with all the major leaguers from the Dominican Republic, there's only one other major leaguer that is from Mocha, and that is Damaso Garcia. He's no longer playing, obviously. He played when we were. Well, actually, might even be before your time, but when I was growing up watching games. Then it was definitely before my time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only nine years older than you. <laughs> Murph remembers Damaso Garcia. That's true. So. What'd you say, Murph? I said like it was yesterday. That's right. <laughs> one ball, one strike to Freddie Galvis, who's hit in seven straight. Six hits and 12 at bats in the series against the Braves. On the Toyota Major League scoreboard, the Reds edge the Nationals three to two. Three runs on 10 hits for Cincinnati. Nationals sitting atop the NL East. Oh, look out. That's coming right above our heads. Wow, that was close. He's watching the monitor. John Reynolds, our stage manager, said that <laughs> never happens. It was about five feet ahead above us. Hey, it didn't score. Over there. I wasn't taking you seriously when he said, oh, that's coming. It was close. really close. <laughs> it would have been good, though. Would have went right into the backdrop, and the backdrop would have caught it. And then we could have just scooped it up. Scooped it up. Because you weren't looking. I was not looking. Rudder goes. Pitches popped up. Long run for Grandal over toward the dugout, and he's out of room. So it remains two balls, two strikes. So the ball would have hit the backdrop. He would have softly come down to the ground and we would have picked it up. That would have been nice. Who well, could have just caught it like you did last year? You would have tried to catch it. You would have caught it. Yeah. I know you would have. Yep. There you go. We have enough baseballs up here in the booth. <laughs> <laughs> JR. <laughs> That's the hand of our stage manager, John Reynolds. <laughs> two balls, two strikes to Galvis. He goes again. Pitch is hit in the air to right field. That's well hit. Going back on it is Puig. It is gone. A home run for Freddie Galvis. And he's just tied this ball game up at two. It's his third home run of the year. Yaka. A well, great at bat. It was in a perfect spot. It makes a winner of Dolores Ramsdale of Langhorn in a McDonald's home run jackpot. She's just won $300. And we've got a 2 2 ball game. Get that foot down early. And you could really see how long his bat stayed in the zone. I mean, that was just a. It was in the zone for a long time, but it was quick through there. Never pulled off, stayed through it. Well, now Adubel Herrera who takes a strike. Nobody out here in the second. That's what I talk about being able to eliminate a certain pitch. I mean, he's, he's been getting ahead. He got ahead with Cody Ashey, but loves that fastball. Cody turned it around. Freddie Galvis turned it around. Well, that's four hits now for the lefties. They only had five against him coming in. Joel Peralta is starting to warm in the bullpen for the Los Angeles Dodgers. And now Odubel has the count even one ball one strike. 264 three homers 22 runs batted in.
You'd love to see a team answer back like that, don't you, Tom? Oh, it's great. As we mentioned, we before the second inning, it's a guy that's not used to pitching in this, you know, in this spot in the ball game. So you figured you would have a little bit of a chance to get something against him. Outside corner, and it's two and two. Duval tried to signal for the umpire, letting him know it was outside. Now, if he's able to make that pitch consistently, the Phillies would have a long night. But he seems to be elevating these pitches and right in middle plate. That one's off the hands, out to second, on one hop to Howie Kendrick. One out here is Sean O'Sullivan. Pitcher number 47, Sean O'Sullivan. Sean can swing it. Looking for him to turn the heater around. Sean was a third baseman at Grossmont Junior College at over 400 during his time there. You know he's a bona fide hitter when he's got the lizard skin on the handle. That's low. One. Ooh. That's not low. No balls and two strikes. So you see a pitcher not budge at a breaking ball, you know it's not a good one. He went around, even though he's trying to hold up. It's the second strikeout for Garcia. Now there's a conversation I would assume going on in the dugout about the breaking ball, that it's not the greatest. So I mean everybody's seen him now. So you can as as hitters use that information to kind of slice it down to one pitch. Exactly. And, and it's not like he throws. I mean we see him touch 95 tonight but it's not like he throws overwhelmingly hard where you have to really gear it up early and then you, you might get fooled by a breaking ball. If it comes out of hand out of his hand you don't see the spin. So that's just one of those pitches you can just flat out eliminate and I haven't even seen him throw a change up yet. He had a couple pitches at 89. I wonder maybe that's his change up. Here's Revere who takes a strike, and it's 0 1. He showed bunt. Ben singled his first time up, was left over third. He's hit in uh, six consecutive games now. I can't get that Galva swing out of my head. That was pretty. He was talking today uh, about Freddie. They think that he's figured out whatever it was that was ailing his swing. For gosh, it had to be almost two months. Yeah. After a red hot start, they think he's putting less pressure on himself, but he's also figured it out from both sides. Pete said a lot of it was between his head. He said, Listen, I had a year once where I was hitting 400 after the first month of the season. And I arrived at the ballpark one day and I said to myself, Man, you're a 400 hitter. And then I walked a couple steps and said, you're not a 400 hitter. And then he said after that. My average spiraled down. Because I all of a sudden I, I wasn't convinced I was that good. He said the game's amazing. He said even when you're going good you're thinking. I'm not that good. And you create a totally different mindset. You start thinking to yourself how am I doing how this? am I doing this. Yeah instead of just doing it. Two balls, two strikes to Revere. Off the hands, out towards short. First chance for Jimmy Rollins on one hop. Throws Revere out. Side is retired. Phillies, though, have tied it up. They do so on a two run home run by that guy right there, Freddie Galvis. He launched this pitch in a perfect spot for a left hander. Home run number three. So we're all leaving at two as we go to the bottom of the second here at Dodger Stadium.
post and our Phillies insiders discuss the announcement of Jonathan Papelbon to the National League All-Star team. Watch Phillies Sports Talk Tuesday night at 5 only on Comcast Sportsnet. Tommy Lasorda will not be the guest host tomorrow on Philly Sports Talk. <laughs> He'll be out here in California soaking in the sun watching the Dodgers. Here's Yasiel Puig. First pitch is fouled toward the on-deck circle and it's 0-1. We're getting 278 with three home runs and 10 runs batted in. Because of injuries, uh, he has not been the same player. The Dodgers uh, have seen the last couple of years. We're not out here all the time, but there does seem to be at times a little dissension. He returned for the DL on June 6th. Played 26 games now since that time. Up it in. I saw Yasiel walk out of the dugout today. My brother always says, just give him the football and let him run it 20 times a game. <laughs> Who's going to tackle him? He is put together. I mean, he is just. He's a big guy. Dow. Yeah, he's a big guy. Imagine him with pads on. That little Bo Jackson look to him. 0 for 4 in yesterday's ball game with a couple strikeouts. One ball, two strikes to Puig. Outside, two and two. Just 24 years old. Yasiel, just like Bryce Harper, he's one of those guys. You say, "Well, can he tone it down?" That's that's just the way he's made. You know, that's his makeup. He's going to go running in the walls. He's going to run hard every time. He's going to hit the ball hard too. He golfs that one out toward left center field. Herrera's to the wall. He jumps and it stays in the yard somehow. And Puig stops at second base. That will be a double. I don't know if Herrera saved a home run, if he mistimed his jump or what, but that ball looked like it was going to go a long way. It sure looked like it made it over the wall. Yeah. And Puig thought he got it and showed much disappointment before reaching the second base. 16, I think this hits the top of the wall. Yeah, it hit the top of the wall. Big reaction of watching this live and watching him coast to the second base, and he thinks he's got it. And then, oh no! <laughs> well, it still is a leadoff double, his tenth of the year. That's called shutting it down. Andre Ethier is the batter. Ethier, 270 this year, 10 homers, 28 RBIs. He's had a decent season. 60 hits at this point in the year. See his current numbers. See his career numbers against the Phillies two seventy one with seven home runs. Awfully close, just a bit outside. That's what being a professional hitter is. He knows he's not going to a do anything with it, and b there's no way he can roll pitch over in that location to second base to advance the runner. Now he look, he's in the second inning. He's looking to do a little bit more than just advance the runner. Unless you get to two strikes, then it's. You know, that's what your manager expects out of you. And 
know you're at the bottom of the lineup, but you're going to see a pinch hitter. Garcia not going to be able to go in the third inning. We knew that would pretty much be the the way it would go for him this evening. He stays alive again and it remains two balls, two strikes. There you see Andre really trying to get out and around the baseball to get it towards the right side of the diamond. Alex Guerrero's in the on deck circle. They have a five man bench. Tiaspo, Ellis, Hernandez, and Van Slyke are the others. Center field that's going to split Cody Ashley and Herrera rounding third and heading home is Puig to throw the second not in time back to back doubles for the Dodgers and they retake the lead it's three to two here in the bottom of the second and that's just icing on the cake if you're a hitter you get him in change places with him four hits four extra base hits the location, yeah, it was outside, but it was elevated. And that enabled Andre to smoke that ball in the left center gap. Really nice piece of hitting there. So now Guerrero will pinch hit. Guerrero hitting 417 this year against the National League East as Jimmy Rollins takes his spot in the on deck circle as the number nine hitter. Hitting 253 with 10 home runs. Takes a curve ball and it's 0 and 1. That one's lined to short, caught by Galvis. And one away. And that'll bring Rollins to the plate for the first time batting ninth in this game. Blues fans standing up, giving him a little bit of an ovation here. Second time uh, this year that Rollins has batted ninth at the, as a starter. But he has been placed into the nine hole and some double switches. Overall hitting 208. He does have seven home runs, 24 runs batted in. Not the kind of year that Rollins had hoped for. He's said he's altered his stance. Maybe his hands might be a little higher. That's what it looks like to me. He's altered his stance from both the right side and the left side. He said it's taken some time. He said some days he has it, some days he doesn't. He has Ethier at, at second. It's a foul and it's out of play. One ball, one strike. And that's hard for a veteran to do because you've been doing it for so long, it's hard to change your stance. Well, those are the things that he did with the Philadelphia Phillies. First in hits, second in games, second in extra base hits, first in doubles. He has hit an eight of nine. Inside, two and one. Strike of the knees, it's two and two. So, Murph, what about the transition for Rollins out here to Los Angeles? 
Well, you know, you heard what he had to say when we sat down uh, before the game and talked with him. Uh, you know, he, he, the transition hasn't been, I don't think it's been incredibly easy for him. It took a little time for him to, to get used to it. But he, he seems very happy, which is obviously an important thing. But I thought it was interesting when he talked about, uh, he, asked, he was asked whether or not he wanted to keep playing two, three more years. And he said, oh, absolutely I do. He said, but... I'm going to have to show that I'm able to do that. I'm going to have to prove it. I'm going to have to earn it. And he said, but uh, as he did in, in, in typical Jimmy Rollins fashion, he kind of looked at everybody and, and half winked and said, but the second half's always been my half, so don't worry about me. I'm going to be just fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the fact that they are leading their division four games over the San Francisco Giants, you know, it still ignites his, uh, his energy. Three balls, two strikes. It's it foul off to our left and out of play. <laughs> Rollins probably would have accepted a trade to the Yankees, but it was here in Southern California that he wanted to go. I think a lot of people thought he would want to go home to San Francisco or Oakland. Three balls, two strikes with the rudder at second base. That one's a grounder foul past Davy Lopes. Davy was very surprised to see me today, wasn't he, Tom? He was. <laughs> Down watching BP. And you and I were going back up to the press box area, and I said, hey, Davy, was Ben Davis? <laughs> <laughs> my first base coach in San Diego. The ground ball foul. Jimmy Rollins talked about his struggles and talked about his swing. Changing your swing in the middle of the season, you're going to have those days when you're not good. One day it's like, wow, it worked. And the next you're feeling lost because your body is trying to figure out what the heck you're asking it to do. Hopefully, I'm past all that. He's tinkered with the stance over the years, but he said today that it, this is a little more drastic than what he's used to. Three balls, two strikes with one out. And he popped that one up. Ruiz, we'll take a look, and it's back out of play. Well, I've noticed with Jimmy, he gets into ruts and slumps when he tries to pull everything. You know, Jimmy's a guy that they can use the whole field, but when he gets pull happy, he starts popping balls up. Rolling balls over, getting out in front of off-speed pitches. And that's, you know, when he starts to go into those ruts. And he pulls that one caught by his friend Ryan Howard. The throw to second on one hop. It's handled by Galvis. And there are two outs. The ball was hit so hard it just didn't give Freddie enough time to get to second base for the for the double play. Number 31, Jock Peterson. That ball was smoked. That's the advantage you have being on the right side of the diamond, knowing the guy really is just pulling everything. You have to be ready for anything. I'll tell you that that was the hardest ball that he hit though in that at bat. He fouled a few of a few up the third or first base line that were hit very softly. Carlos Ruiz was trying to buy some time to see if they wanted to review that or not. Take a look. I think his foot is on it right there before the ball's in his glove. And then it comes up. But Galvis had him tagged him. So two away, and here is Jack Peterson. Oh man, be careful with him. One one to Peterson. Looking to shoot that one to left, Tom. Huh? I think he looked, was looking to shoot that one out in the parking lot. <laughs> one of four Dodgers to go to the All Star game. It's hard to have 20 homers and only 38 RBIs. <laughs> You need a chiropractor as well. well. That's the reason why. One of the reasons. One 
runners in. Four extra base hits already for the Dodgers, who have 262 on the season. O2 pitch. Ground ball right side. Cesar Hernandez in shallow right field. Throws out Jock Peterson. Side is retired. One run scores. Two hits. One man left. We are on to the third. Dodgers up by one. Com. Go to the fan section for all the information. Please submit your answer on the subject line. All right, Ben, here we go. Which Dodger pitcher did Jimmy Rollins hit a home runoff in game five of the 2008 National League Championship Series? The answer will be revealed a little later on. This goes against what your plan was for tonight's answer. Yes, it did. Tell everybody what your plan was. Which Dodger pitcher did Jimmy Rollins hit a home runoff of game five of 2008? Tell, tell everybody what you said you were going to do. I was going to tell everybody that no matter what, my answer tonight was going to be Maury Wills. Yeah, Maury Wills would not fit for that <laughs> one. Here is Eric Surkamp up from the minor leagues, 7 and 2 with a 3.770 ERA. He was a reliever and a starter for the Dodgers in the minors. He has spent three other seasons, parts of three other seasons in the big leagues. Turner, bare hands, throws, and it hits Cesar Hernandez, who was not. Out of the baseline, and that'll be another base hit, I would think, for Cesar. Was PF Flyers on, didn't he? He sure did. Well, I'm telling you, Ben, it's been amazing to watch how he has been running and, and how well he's been running. That is close, but I think he'll be okay. Yeah, they have scored that a bunt single. I just like when they they get the ball close enough to the line. If it goes foul, it goes foul. It's 0-1. No big deal. But to turn around and, and square around a bunt, and you either push it back to the pitcher or you bunt it too hard, or you know that's just a wasted at bat. Not only for the player but for the ball club. Franco hit it went out toward the warning track in center field his first time up. So he's 0 for 1. Sir Camp has pitched in the big leagues for the Giants in 2011, 2013, and the White Sox last year. Outside, 1 0. I see Michael get into one right here. I like to swing his first at bat, 2 0. He drove a ball to center and Advanced Ben Revere, but he had a 2 0 swing his first at bat. Very aggressive. Let's see that one again.
Tell you, if Cesar can read him, and it's three balls, no strikes, so he probably won't do it here. If Cesar can read him, he is awfully slow to the plate once he gets into his motion. I think he got the green light. I saw Rock point towards the field. Usually that's a universal sign. Point towards the field, you're swinging. Point away from, you know, towards the Dodgers dugout, you're not swinging. And he takes ball four. That was a changeup. And it puts runners on first and second. Well, we talked about Maury Wills, and tonight Maury Wills threw out the first pitch because all fans coming to the ballpark tonight received Maury Wills figurine. Maury sliding. Jimmy Rollins was out there to catch the ceremonial first pitch from the Dodgers legends. There is the, uh, I guess you call it a figurine. I don't think it's a bobblehead. The fans received that. So Ryan Howard's the batter. Howard takes inside. It's 1 0. For the first three innings, the Phillies' first two batters have reached base safely. Back to back singles in the first, a single and a home run in the second, and now a single and a bunt here in the third. 3 0 changeup to Michael Franco. That's showing a lot of respect. I don't agree with it, but it is showing a lot of respect for him. Tap or foul, and it's one and one. The simple fact it's the third inning. Yeah. Well, this guy is a little more stretched out than the guy that started, Yimi Garcia, who went two innings, a lot four hits, and two earned runs. Sir Cap uh, down in the minor leagues with the Dodgers was four and two with a 4.50 ERA. He began the year with the White Sox. Dodgers acquired him from the White Sox for minor leaguer Blake Smith. That ball got a piece of Grandal. Another one of the Dodgers that made the All Star game this year. Zach Greinke made it. Adrian Gonzalez, Jock Peterson. I don't miss these. I just don't miss that. <laughs> <laughs> You miss it. You'd like to be back out there. <laughs> You're right. I would. Wouldn't be able to walk the next day, but <laughs> give it a shot. Aha! A fly ball to right center field. That's well hit. Peterson going back toward the wall. It is gone. A three-run home run for Ryan Howard. That was a towering shot, and the Phillies have just taken the lead. It's a five-three ball game. You hang it, we bang it. Yeah. I didn't think it had enough juice, Tom. I didn't either. I thought it was going to at least allow the runners to advance. Well, that's the 14th home run for Howard. It's one you see in your dreams. Good extension through the ball. I think that's why that ball went out. Now, little on later on in this ball game, that ball does not go out. Especially at nighttime, the ball doesn't carry like it does. During the day, but good swing there by Ryan Howard. Stayed on that breaking ball. High five for Steve Henderson. Here's Carlos Ruiz with nobody out. Three runs in. And that ball's off the glove of Grandal. And that's why I don't agree with the 3-0 change up to Franco. You know, the more guys you put on, you're just asking for trouble. Yeah, I think it shows, as you said, the respect for Franco, but I don't want to say the lack of respect uh, for Ryan Howard, but the feeling that all right, we can get Ryan Howard out. Well, that backfired on him. Opposite way, a base hit for Ruiz. Well, they're getting a little restless here at Dodger Stadium as the Phillies get their fourth base runner aboard here in the third. 
Tom, no. That's the Philly fan saying chooch. <laughs> there may be some of that in there. Cody Ashley singled his first time up and scored a run. Just a bit outside. It's one and zero. When you're a hitter, you turn around to the umpire and say, hey man, don't help him out at all. There's a curveball caught by Gonzalez. Not much Ruiz could do. Two outs. I think if you're Cody Ashley, you're walking back thinking, man, what else can I do? Even make a move to get out of the batter's box. Watch when Gonzalez catches this ball. And you're helpless as a hitter, you're helpless as a runner. I'm not seeing a whole lot of swing and miss stuff. Yeah, I just, just not seeing a whole lot there. There's another rolling breaking ball. Well, Freddie Galvis now batting right handed. Galvis with a two run home run his first time up. Takes away. It's one and zero. Oh. Freddie is now hitting eight straight. Revere's hitting six straight. Cesar Hernandez is hitting eleven straight games. When Freddie wants back right there. Yeah, Freddie wanted to hit. Freddie wanted to be just like Jimmy Rollins and hit a home run from the left side and the right side. Swing and a miss. He got him with a breaking pitch, and the side is retired. Three run home run, though, by Ryan Howard has given the Phillies the lead. The Phillies have a two run home run by Galvis, and now a three run home run by Ryan Howard. Looked like Ryan knew it was gone off the bat. They carried out. It's 5 3 fills as we go to the bottom of the third. Buy your Delaware Valley Honda dealers. Hurry to your local Del Val Honda dealer or visit DelValHondaDealers.com. Well, the Phillies lead it five to three thanks to Ryan Howard's three-run home run. 
We'll go to the bottom of the third. Howie Kendrick leads it off and he takes a pitch down low. It's one ball and no strikes. Kendrick uh, tripled his last time up. Ben Revere dove for the ball out in right field. And he just couldn't come up with it. Kendrick's having a good year. Acquired from the LA Angels. His average close to 300, seven homers, 26 RBIs. In fact, he has 90 hits, which is third among National League second basemen. He was a guy that Mike Sosa just absolutely loved. In fact, he'd play him every day, he'd hit behind runners, he had a little bit of power, played good second base. Well, they say that he's been, he was comfortable from day one with Rollins at shortstop. And I, I think that, you know, for the most part, guys can be comfortable pretty easy up the middle. But they said that they had a, a great rapport at second and short. There's a curve ball, and it's two and two. Well, there are two guys that have been very good at their position for such a long time. So I would say that, and they're both, like I talked about, the ball players. Their instincts are very good. So for them to gel, it's not going to take a whole lot of time. Fly ball to right center field, Odubel Herrera. And he makes the catch one away. Here's Justin Turner. Sunday, July 19th, when the Phillies take on the Miami Marlins. It'll be Pennsylvania Auto Theft Prevention Authority Travel Month, free to fans 15 and older. What are your tickets? By going to Phillies.com. Justin Turner entered the ball game eighth in the National League and hitting at 312. Sack fly his first time up. And that pitch just a bit inside. One ball, no strikes. Another guy with an exaggerated leg kick. You know, you talk about Odubel Herrera with his leg kick, and sometimes he's a tough time getting that foot down. Turner's the opposite. He seemingly always gets that down on time. Basically was a utility guy for the New York Mets and has now worked his way uh, into you know, being almost an everyday player for the Los Angeles Dodgers. In the offseason, he's a leprechaun. <laughs> Is there work for those guys? Absolutely. Boy, that's a pretty good pitch. Just a bit outside, two balls, one strike. Tonight's game is also available in Spanish. Just use the SAP button on your television or change the language through the menu on your cable box. See. Bill, Will, and Angel are back in Philadelphia calling tonight's game. That one's going to be a fair ball down the right field line. Just under the feet of the ball boy. Revere gets to it. His throw to second base is not in time. Freddie looked over toward the dugout. Freddie may have hurt himself. Pete McCannon is up above the top step. Larry Bow is on the phone. Adrian Gonzalez. Ben got to that quick, made a decent throw. Been very active out there this evening. All right, so five extra base hits now for the Dodgers. 15 double for Justin Turner. And just another throw on the opposite side of where he would like it to be. Enable Turner to get in there. The head first slide. Obviously want that ball more towards the first base side of the bag. So even if that would have been the case, it still would have been a close play. All right, Adrian Gonzalez homered his last time up. Now that made it 2-0 Dodgers. His 278th career home run. There was a thought that he wasn't going to play tonight because he got hit by a pitch uh, against the New York Mets. But he said after yesterday's game, he said, No, I'll be all right. A little treatment. Oh. 
we joked today, but there was probably some truth to it that he knew that there was a right hander on the mound that he probably handled. And that's not where you want to miss for Adrian Gonzalez. Down and in. He knows what to do with that. It's such an easy swing. Effortless. Chooch going out there. So listen, one and zero. We do have a base open. It is only the third inning, but we know what he can do. Yeah, and I, I can't imagine that O'Sullivan is going to go deep into this game. I think you got to get him through. I mean, I hate to say five, and then think about the bullpen, but you got to play this if you're O'Sullivan. Uh, very carefully. He continues to work around him. I see Tisha stand up here and do it the more conventional way. I don't have him waste the bullet. Side ball four, so that'll put runners on first and second. That'll bring Yasmani Grandal to the plate. He flied out to left his first time up. Murph, this is a guy that's been a, a pretty big bright spot when it comes to uh, the Los Angeles Dodgers. You know what? And he's also a pretty good story when it comes to the National League. I mean, here's a guy last year who played for the Padres. He appeared in 128 games last year. He batted just 225, 15 home runs, and a handful of RBIs. Then you turn around, he gets uh, here to L.A., and he's really turned himself around. You look at his numbers, he's played exactly half those games. He's batting 271, has 12 home runs already, and he's hitting to all fields. That's the kind of guy he is. I mean, good things happen when you're able to spread to all fields. You see he's distributed his, his hits to all fields and his home runs as well. So power to all fields. He is an all-star this year and, uh, you know, really has kind of uh, re-emerged or emerged for the first time, I should say, uh, as a, uh, a premier player in the National League. So it's been quite a season, quite a story for Grandal. Yeah, and Murph, uh, the, the Padres had hoped this is what they would get when they had him, and they just didn't have this same success. As O'Sullivan turns back towards second base. Switch hitter who has been very effective. Ben, you have any insight on what you think Pete McCannon said to O'Sullivan when he went out to the mound? Very surprised to see Pete go out there at that time. That one's low. It's one ball, no strikes. If anything, I'm thinking, you know, we talk about Grendel. Making it to the I mean what a big thrill that is for a guy you know switching teams and coming over here and it's just a, a really a big honor. Bruce Bochy has his double play combination and Joe Panic and Brendan Crawford from the Giants. There's a strike on the outside corner one and one. I think the the reason for the visit from Pete McKinnon was to go out there and say hey enough you know, we got your five three lead here let's attack let's be aggressive. He may have used some other different words. For him. <laughs> I, I, I think it's a good thing. You know, it's. I love it. You can't keep nibbling. No, it is a shame because he had two strikes on turn. You know, that could have been the second out of the inning. Now you got first and second, one out. Grindel and Puig. So, hopefully, you can roll one over here. Ball got away inside two and one. Not even three innings in, he's at sixty pitches.
to left field. Cody Ashey, he's under it. Turner's way off the second base bag, but he'll get back. And there are two outs. Two away, and Yasiel Puig is coming up. This is just one thing you have to avoid is, is getting into these hitters' counts. So 3 1, he's lucky this ball isn't deposited in the seats. I mean, that's a ball, it came off his bat hot. I thought for a minute I had a chance to get over Cody's head, but it just really died. But you, you can't get in that position, Tom. You, you can't do it with a 5 3 lead, in third inning, you know, walking guys and, and running hitters' counts, you're going to get hurt. Well, Puig doubled off the top of the fence in left center field his last time up on a curveball. And he pops that one foul to our right out of play. And it's no balls in one strike. There's Gonzalez over at first. You saw Turner at second base. Surprised he threw him a curveball. I really am. Puig just nodded yes on that pitch. Puig's probably upset at himself that he didn't swing at it. Yeah, that, that was a hanger. Because he's nibbling so much, a pitch like that, which is close, he's not going to get from the home plate umpire. See, this is where if you have a little more juice on your heater, you can climb the ladder. I'd be very hesitant if I were Sean O'Sullivan to do that with a fastball that pretty much sits at 90. One ball, two strikes to Yasiel Puig. Swing and a miss. He got him on the inside part of the plate. He came in at 92 with that one. That's his first strikeout of the night. And the side is retired. Well, it's taken a hefty load of pitches for Sean O'Sullivan, but he is through three. We'll play to the fourth inning with the Phils on top of the Dodgers, five to three. Player of the year is WB Mason, providing amazingly low prices on kitchen disposables, consumables, small wares, and so much more. From your new restaurant partner, who but WB Mason. Well, it's nice to be out here at Dodger Stadium. One of the 
best places to come to watch a baseball game for so many years. Phillies lead it five to three as we go to the top of the fourth inning. It'll be Odubel Herrera, the pitcher's spot. Well, Sullivan will remain in. And then the top of the order against uh, Eric Sirkan. Not a bad idea for Odubel to try that. He tried it on a breaking pitch. It's outside, one ball, no strikes. He grounded out his first time up. Outside, 2 0. In the air to right field. We going back toward the track to the wall. It is gone into the bleachers for Odubel Herrera, his fourth homer of the season. Now 6 3 fills. It's their third home run of the night. My voice is going to get sore, Tom, but yeah. <laughs> uh, his fourth homer, as we mentioned, he's now hitting six straight. And I'm not saying batting practice equates to a good game, but there he is again, Tom. Down and in to a lefty. His batting practice today, he was launching balls. And he really back legged out, and you could see him drop down on that backside. And you can do that if you get a pitch down and in as a lefty. That ball was killed. It was. Colonel Sullivan waves at the 1 0 pitch. It's one ball, one strike. Nice little backflip. Same pitch this time. It's one and two to O'Sullivan. An exaggerated leg kick. If he does not get that foot down, he's not a good hitter. When he gets down like that, the ball comes off his bat hard. Well, there definitely have been signs, and because he's playing a little bit more too, it's easier to see. There have been signs uh, that he's got his uh, his foot down. In enough time. Ground ball to shortstop Rollins. There's plenty of time with O'Sullivan running. And there's one away. We'll go back to the top of the order for Ben Revere. Let's check in with Greg Murphy. He's got some All Star notes to talk about. Yeah, the uh, National League and American League All Stars named last night. Uh, you already saw the reserves for the National Leagues, but here are your starters for the National League. Buster Posey will get the start as can be catcher. Paul Goldschmidt at first base. D. Gordon, what a season he's having for the Miami Marlins. He'll be at second. Johnny Peralta for the Cardinals. He'll be able to play shortstop. And then Todd Frazier is at third. And then your outfielder, Bryce Harper, Matt Holliday, John Carlos Stanton gets voted in as a starter however he is hurt as we know so no word yet on who's going to replace him in the starting lineup inside it's one ball and no strikes hey, there's going to be a couple guys that'll have to be replaced not only National League but also in the American League Miguel Cabrera is one of those guys that's going to have to be replaced so you figure they'll take somebody that's one of the reserves and then they'll add somebody who hasn't been selected yet to the reserve list yes about Miggy, it's the first time he's ever been on the DL in his mm. career. One ball, one strike to Ben Revere. And Revere slices it on one hop to Rollins. Two outs. All right, speaking of the American League, take it away, Murph. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, as you mentioned, Miguel Cabrera is, uh, was voted in as the starter, but Albert Pujols is going to be the starter now. He is replacing him at first base. Salvador Perez, one of the Kansas City Royals in the starting lineup, will be the catcher. Jose Altuve for the Astros at second. Alcides Escobar it will be at short. And Josh Donaldson, uh, the leading vote getter, will be at third base. And Mike Trout, uh, Lorenzo Cain, Alex Gordon are your outfielders. And Nelson Cruz. And the Seattle Mariners will be the DH for the American League. The, those are your starters. We'll show you the uh, reserves coming up in a little bit. The balls in one strike. Well, Pujol certainly deserves it. He's had a wonderful first half of the season. Well, one to Cesar Hernandez. He's two for two. Inside. 
Cesar single to right his first time up as a left handed hitter bunt singles last time. He now has 28 hits since the 21st of June. Dirt and it's three balls and two strikes. Ground ball to second base. Kendrick stays down on it. Three straight ground balls after the home run by Odubel Herrera. Herrera's home run is fourth of the year. El Torito going yard for the second time on this road trip. Third home run of the night for the Phillies. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth inning. The Phillies lead the Dodgers six to three. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Xfinity, the official entertainment provider of the Philadelphia Phillies, and by the Quality Plus Sports Stores. Go further. Ben, what are you going to do tomorrow? Are you going to go to Santa Monica Pier? No. You sure? Looks pretty nice out there. Our director, Nick Marchetta, was out uh, sightseeing yesterday. I don't know if he went on the Ferris wheel. He looked a little burnt today, so. Beautiful day here today. Yesterday, a little overcast today. Sunny all day. Beautiful. Here's Andre Ethier to lead it off. RBI double his first time up to left center field. It's a uh, Sullivan gets him to pop the first pitch foul. It's 0 1. What is it they call it? The marine layer? Marine layer, yeah. I just don't want to call it smog, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not allowed to call it smog. Right. Whatever it was, it still burns fair skin when you're out in it. Held that there for a moment. That has been called a strike on occasion tonight. Two balls and one strike to Ethier. And that's low three and one. Dodgers do lead 
the National League in walks. They have one walk here tonight, so they've walked 300 times. And hence the reason why their on base percentage is tops in the National League at 330. There's ball four. So, second walk issued. Toyota Alumni Weekend will take place when the Atlanta Braves come to town July 30th through August 2nd. The festivities will be the 31st, the 1st, and the 2nd. On the 31st, Pat Burrow Wall of Fame induction night. Saturday, uh, Saturday night is Philly's Alumni Night. And Sunday is a day game, Philly's Wall of Fame Fathead, free to all fans. Tickets can be purchased by going to phillies.com. Well, Sir Camp will be up there to try to sacrifice at a curveball. That's a strike, 0 and 1. Your manager, do you find Sean O'Sullivan, the walking the leadoff guy, 6 3 ball game? Well, I don't know what I you do. I guess you can't do it. I think you try to do something to get them to <laughs> stop walking guys and stop allowing first inning runs and stop allowing runs in the fourth and fifth. Those are the other two innings that have been problematic for the Phillies pitchers. Well, runs are going to happen, but a leadoff walk. When you have the lead. When you have the lead. Franco will throw Sir Camp out. That's a good bunt. Sacrifice successful. 5 4 on the put out. And a 6 3 lead. At that. That was the, you know, we talked about, we seem to be talking about a lot of things this year, but walks were the big issue. Would you agree with this? The, I mean, they, they still are, but the first month they were really the big issue. And they haven't lost you know, their importance, obviously. I would say that runners in scoring position is the number one overall factor, but number two would be the walks. Yeah. Well, the Dodgers have a runner in scoring position. Rollins, nine pitch at bat, his first time up. He lined out to Ryan Howard. And that pitch low. It's one ball, no strikes. 91 mile an hour fastball. That was a good at bat by Jimmy, despite lining out. Saw 10 pitches. Got a lot of swings, a lot of foul balls. Out of play, one and one. Dodgers uh, during June and July are at 500. In fact, over their last 51 games, they're 24 and 27. And you see how their numbers compared to April and May when they were 29 and 20. Starters' ERA has been better. The starters have been really good, but the bullpen struggled, and the runs per game are down. July, the bullpen numbers for the Dodgers awful. Don Mattingly knows this, but. They've allowed 14 earned runs in 12 innings, counting the two tonight for Surkamp, the two innings for Surkamp. Two balls, one strike to Rollins. Two balls, two strikes. Ground ball over to first. That's a foul ball. Pretty close. Rollins will take it because he was going to be out. I kind of wish it wasn't a foul ball. Very close. From our vantage point, it, it looked like it went over the first base bag. But we're up in foul territory, foul ball territory. Behind home plate. Yeah, that's tough to tell from behind home plate like that. That's basically the look we have.
guy's working hard to try to get through uh, this inning. He's been working hard through the first three and the third. And he's thrown a lot of pitches. Two and two. Well, you had Rollins out front. All right, as a catcher, you saw, you see that Rollins is out front on that pitch. That pitch. How do you try to get him out in this spot? I just keep going slower and slower. Oh, away. you would. Okay. So nothing fast here. Until he makes it adjust that adjustment, I'm not going to give in to him. And they do go slower with a breaking ball, and it's fouled. Beyond the third base dugout. What did you think of Jimmy's comments today? Politically correct? Expected. Yeah. Turn so of Major League scoreboard, the Braves and the Brewers are final. The Braves win at 5 3. Kelly Johnson, a home run, three RBIs. Outside, it's three and two. Jimmy was very candid about. One of the reporters asked, "Would you like to see Cole Hamels here?" He said, "Yes." He said, "Is he the you know, Kershaw and Granky on your team now?" And you get to see some guys go out there, really accomplished, polished pitchers. He said, "You know, I'm biased because I played with Cole for so many years, but getting a chance to watch Granky, he mentioned Granky and not Kershaw was." Was something. Well, this is under it and shallow center makes the catch. You know, we always think of Dodgers right away, we think Clayton Kershaw. You know what he said, but watching Granky go out and pitch every fifth day is, he said, it's just something to watch. Well, he said there's, there's a lot of similarities to Cole because of the, and, and nothing more than the lack of run support. Right. Granky just doesn't get run support. He's a haircut, but he doesn't get run support. <laughs> They are tough. Those two are tough. The yeah, Phillies will see both of them later on in this series. We'll see Anderson tomorrow. Here's Jock Peterson. He's 0 for 2. He's popped out to short. He's grounded out to second. Jimmy's two at bats. He's seen 19 pitches tonight. Very strange to see him in the, the nine hole in the lineup. Foul and it's one and one. He had him geared up for something else. Well, I should say pretty good because of the velocity, but it was up. Oh boy. He swung over the top of that ball. Well, fortunately, he was geared up for a fastball in some sorts there. It's like he's always geared up for a fastball. One ball, two strikes to Peterson. And the runner at second, Philly's up by three. That was a back. 86 pitches with two outs in the fourth inning. There's no way he can go past five. No. We're going to try to shove him past five if they can. Swing and a miss. He got it with a curve. 75 miles an hour. It's the second strikeout for O'Sullivan. 
No runs, no hits, one man left in scoring position. We'll go to the fifth inning. It'll be three, four, and five. Franco, Ryan Howard, and Carlos Ruiz when we return. Answer. All right, Ben, we know it's not Maury Wills. Which Dodger pitcher did Jimmy Rollins hit a home run off in game five of the 2008 National League Championship Series? Chad Billingsley. Chad Billingsley is correct. Log back on to Phillies.com to find out if you're the winner of a Phillies prize pack. Michael Franco leads it off and he takes a fastball. It's 0 1. He's had to put two and two together on that one. Well, Jimmy had some big hits in the postseason. So he miss. His overall numbers weren't always good, but he was a red light player when it came to the postseason. So we get a miss, and Franco strikes out. Talk about going slow and slower. That's exactly what Sir Camp did. So one away, Ryan Orton, who hit a three-run home run, his first time or his last time up. First baseman, Ryan Howard. He just kept subtracting there on Franco. You gonna keep swinging at it? Just gonna go slower and lower. That National League Championship Series, when Rollins hit that home run, he hit only 143 in the series against the Dodgers. The 227 in the World Series. And Howard is hit by a pitch. And that's a breaking ball. Yeah, no think, intent there. It was not a fastball of any kind. So Howard's over at first. Catcher. And Carlos, Carlos Ruiz, Ruiz will be the hitter. Just the ball that gets away from Sir Camp. Elbow guard helped out on that one. So let me ask you this, Tom. Do I meet Ryan again tomorrow and buy him another coffee? Uh, yes, you should. Because I, I have to. Just make sure that you you know that Anderson is the starting pitcher when he asks. <laughs> I want to give another false scout report. You tell him it's Kofax. <laughs> Carlos takes at the knees. Carlos singled his first his last time up, flat out to right his first time. Hit there, Tom. And Ruiz 
Williams is down looking on a breaking pitch. Two outs. Not the textbook way to catch a ball. If you're a catcher, this is not the way to do it. Uh, mm, no. Remember, Mike Piazza used to do that all the time. Sometimes on a breaking ball, he would drop to two knees to catch a, a, a pitch. But that is not what you teach the, uh, the children at home, Tom. Well, Cody Ashy hit the ball hard his last time up, and he hits it hard here out toward right. Puig is there, makes the catch. Sometimes it's an adventure when Puig comes in to make catches like that. No runs, no hits, and one man left. Sean O'Sullivan trying to get it through the fifth inning. Greater Philadelphia region, there's ample opportunity to help build houses, volunteer, or be a mentor. Visit citizensbank.com slash community to learn more. At Citizens Bank, we want to help you bank better. So the next time you have a question about money, don't keep it to yourself. Ask a citizen. Bottom of the fifth inning, Phillies lead it six to three. Howie Kendrick will lead it off. It'll be Kendrick Turner and Adrian Gonzalez. And what is most likely the last inning for Sean O'Sullivan. Kendrick tonight is one for two. He takes low. It's one and oh. He's just starting to get loose out the bullpen. Things were getting so bad where the Phillies uh, starters were not getting deep into the game that Pete Buchanan actually toyed with the idea a few days ago of not having starters throw their side days. And have them be ready in the bullpen. And then, if they needed them, they'd have them come out and pitch in the game. If not, they'd have them throw their side day late in the ball game. Three and one is that one's on the inside corner. You can do that with a staff that's a little bit younger, not accustomed to. Big league way of life, I guess you could say. Well, he said he thought about it, and then he ran through the staff. As that one is lined down the right field line. It's going to be another extra base hit for Kendrick. Let's see how Revere plays this one. He cuts it off, which is important with the way that corner is angled. And Kendrick's at second base with a leadoff double. That's his second extra base hit of the night. A boatload of them tonight. Every hit they have is an extra base hit. Now some good hitting tonight by the Dodgers. Kendrick, obviously, with the two down the right field line. Turner with the double down the right field line. So they're staying on pitches and, and staying inside the baseball. That's just good hitting. Usually we see lefties doing that down the left field line, but the righties are able to do it. These guys are good, good hitters. You talk about their own base percentage, tops in the National League. We look at the, the Cardinals, very professional hitting ball club, but these guys, a lot of veterans. 
been around the block a few times. They know how to hit. So six extra base hits for the Dodgers tonight. There was a fastball for a strike to Justin Turner. Anyway, getting back to the starter in the bullpen, you know, in case the starter doesn't go deep in that game. He said, then I thought about it. He goes, Adam Morgan, we don't want him to do that because of the shoulder surgery he's coming back from. We don't want him to, to be in that spot. As you see what the Dodgers have done in the last nine games with runners in scoring position. That one's hit out towards second on one hop. Hernandez has it. And he throws to first, so one away. Kendrick at second base. Nice play there by Cesar. He thought about it for a quick minute to flip that ball to Freddie at second base. He may have had him. I think Freddie wanted him to. He may have had him, but in a 6 3 ball game, you don't make this play. You get the short out at first base. He wanted to do it. I wouldn't have blamed him if he did, but you don't want first and second. Nobody out with Adrian Gonzalez up. So it's a smart play, very headsy play there by Cesar. Major Gonzalez homered his first time up, walked his last time. So we're going to miss. It's 0 and 1. Oh, catcher's interference. An error charge to the catcher. Second time that's happened this year to Ruiz. Catcher. Money, yep, that's where the uh, so the, the glove go down a little bit. I believe I was doing the other game that he had catcher's interference. I'm trying to think back to when that was. It was early in the year. It was early. For Grandal. Seven hits now, all seven extra bases. High right fastball. Not only does he get on top of this, but that ball's out of third. And this ball is driven. Yeah, I mean, this, that ball is the longest rushed. one of the, of the night. It's a 6 6 game. Yasiel Puig, the batter, he's one for two. And he hits one softly to first. Ryan Howard is up with it. Two outs. Rondal, 13 home runs, 34 runs batted in. I think these are the kind of the bats with Yasiel Quig that the Dodgers get frustrated with. You go up there with intent to do some damage. You know, with a check swing bleeder to first base, three unassisted. You know, that can only go on for so long because he has that in him, that potential, that power in him. You see him go out and do that, and he does that numerous times a year. Takes a breaking ball. It's one ball and no strikes. Juan Nicasio is warming in the pen for the Dodgers. Nobody is warming in the pen for the Phillies. The Sullivan due to hit third next inning. I can't imagine him. Oh, he's got to be out. Time is called a beach ball he has gotten onto the field. Shocker. That never happens here, does it, Tom? No, you got to get that into your vocabulary when you come to Dodger Stadium. That has to be a sentence that's part of your uh, your delivery. A beach ball has found its way onto the field.
Pitch number 100 for O'Sullivan. And he grounds it off the front of the Phillies dugout. My son was playing with one the other day, and after about the maybe 15th or 16th time, I told him not to. In the house? In the house. Keep playing with it. I went and found the biggest knife I could find. And no. The big old <laughs> slit right through it. Yeah. Wasn't playing with that one anymore. Over to the first base side. Ryan Howard underhand to O'Sullivan. Side is retired. 3 1 on the put out. But the Dodgers tie it up on a three run home run. Each team has a three run bomb. We'll go to the sixth. to join the National League in the 2015 All-Star Game. Jonathan has been closing the door for the Phillies with consistency since he arrived, and the 2015 season hasn't been any different. Leading up to his Midsummer Classic selection, he had saved all 14 attempts, 16 straight dating back to last season, and 30 of his last 31 opportunities. Papelbon's sixth All-Star nomination is well-deserved, and it's brought to you by... Independence Blue Cross. Live fearless. Yep, there you see it. Jonathan Papelbon, the six-time All-Star. He joins the rest of these National League pitchers on the list. Madison Bumgarner, no real surprise there. Raldis Chapman. Jacob DeGrom from the New York Mets makes the All-Star team. Uh, you see some other guys. Michael Waka down there. A.J. Burnett, former Philly. And, of course, Zach Greinke from right here uh, as an L.A. Dodger also on that list. Some pretty good names for the National League who will be throwing in Cincinnati in just about a week or so, guys. Yeah, and Murph, uh, Max Scherzer is supposed to pitch uh, on Sunday, uh, so that will probably eliminate him from any consideration to be the starter. That's generally been the rule uh, for the National League teams. I mean, for National League American League teams, if the guy starts on Sunday, he's not going to be able to start on Tuesday. Freddie Galvis. Hits the 0 2 pitch foul toward the camera well, or the 0 1 pitch foul. That is just a sweet swim. You see that in his first at bat. Yeah. He went fishing after that one. Fourth strikeout for Turkamp. The Moore's kids run the bases for fans 14 and under will be Wednesday July 22nd. Well, the Phillies take on the Tampa Bay Rays. It's part of a three game series that will wrap it up. You can get tickets anytime you can get them right now if you want by going to Phillies.com. Four strikeouts for Sir Kent. Here's Odubel Herrera. There is nobody warming up in the Phillies bullpen, and Sean O'Sullivan is in the on deck circle. So I guess he's going to pitch the bottom of the sixth inning. This is what Odubel did in his last at bat. And we talked about getting that foot down. 
As long as he gets that foot down, his back can whip through the zone. I mean, that's it. That's as quick at bat as we've seen all year out of him. Try to check his swing. They appeal. He does not think he went. Matty Gonzalez saying something to him. He went. You, you think he went? I thought he went. But that's not something a rookie needs to be doing. I'll tell you that right I now. I do believe that's what Matty Gonzalez is telling him. He's not Adrian Beltre, I'll tell you that. And he's hit by a pitch. Second batter be hit by a pitch, and this time he's hitting the arm. And the second to be hit by a breaking ball. Ryan Howard was hit in his Pitcher. last at bat. Sean O'Sullivan. I am stunned that O'Sullivan is, is hitting here. I, Tom, I don't get it. I, he did everything right. On that, except move his elbow. <laughs> you know? For Cunningham on the horn. Joel Peralta was warming up in the bullpen. The Dodgers probably fi figure they could have, you know, either Frank Hoare hit or Darren Ruff, and then they would have brought in Peralta. Righty on righty. But that's not the case. Well, Pete is concerned about the number of outings and innings that the relievers have thrown. Now, that may be part of the reason why they're thinking about letting O'Sullivan pitch the bottom of the sixth inning, but he's not missing a whole lot of barrels. I mean, they have seven hits, and all seven are extra base hits. And here comes Don Mattingly. So, this may be a pitching change even before O'Sullivan sees a pitch. Mattingly has not signaled it as of yet, although Peralta is walking down the mounds and heading toward the gate. With the pitcher batting, Don Mattingly is going to bring in a relief pitcher. So we have a pitching change here at Dodger Stadium. One man down, top of the sixth inning, a runner over, first base. We'll be back right after this. Please. Now pitching for the Dodgers. Number 62, Joel Peralta. And the Dodgers bullpen have the National League high in strikeouts per nine innings at 10.25. Phillies are there as well. Dodgers bullpen, though, has not been good here in the month of July. I know it's only been a few games. It's, this is their fifth ball game. I don't know if they brought Joel Peralta in here to try to get a strikeout. There's Clayton Kershaw. He's one to pick up a strikeout or two as a starter. So now Joel Peralta to the right. 
brought in to face the dangerous Sean O'Sullivan. Hitting from the right side. O'Sullivan, I think, is up there to try to sacrifice with Odubel Herrera at first, even though there's one out. He squares. Eddie Bunce foul. 0 and 1. Sean does have 101 pitches. See Peralta's numbers 2 and 1, a 2.89 ERA. I don't even, I mean, you know better than I do, but I, I'm not even concerned about the pitches. I'm concerned more about how hard those pitches have been hit. <laughs> and how is the, the Dodgers, how is it not a double switch? How do they not? Well, I think Peralta is going to finish up this inning and then they'll go with somebody else to start the inning. But it's a good question. And then my key was wear out Johnny Holstaff. And God love him. I had a teammate. I asked who was throwing the second game of doubleheader. I said, Johnny Holstaff. And he said, Is he a righty or lefty? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's not the only time it's happened. <laughs> Outside, one and one. Takes a strike. It's one and two. Takes low. Two balls, two strikes. Detroit Major League scoreboard, top of the ninth inning, the Mets lead the Giants 2 0. That's in the top of the ninth. Top of the ninth inning. Game started five minutes after this one. Hmm. We're in the top of the sixth. Two balls, two strikes. O'Sullivan squares, and he bunts it. Foul. And it's a strikeout. Kind of a waste of that bat. So two away. And Ben Revere is coming up. Well, now if you're Odubel, you got to think about running at some point. Number two, Ben Revere. Yes, that's why Donald Arthur Mattingly brought in Peralta. Yeah, to get that punchy. Wanted a strikeout. Ben is one for three. You agree that Odubel is going to run at some point here? I don't know why he wouldn't. Over Herrera back easily. Phillies with 49 stolen bases coming in. They have one steal here tonight. It's uh, Hernandez. Pitches a breaking ball. It's a strike. No throw by Grandal. It's a stolen base number nine for Odubel Herrera. He's in scoring position. A base hit now, and the Phils should retake the lead. Now the outfielders are kind of shallow. Excellent jump. Well, it's an excellent jump, but you know you're going to throw a breaking ball with a high leg kick like that. I could have stolen that bag. And yes, Tom, I could have. Yes, you could have. 
foul. And now it's one and two. When you talk about not giving your catcher any chance whatsoever. Grandel did the right thing. A lot of catchers, especially young catchers, will just try and you know show it off and show everybody how great an arm they have. Grandel did the right thing. Just eat it. Let everybody know it's a, that's on the pitcher. It's not on me. One ball, two strikes. We're all to set. Outside, two or two. Of course, when you're younger, you think you can throw out everybody. Carl Lewis is right. I'll throw him out too. <laughs> well, you certainly embrace the challenge a little bit more when you're younger. Yes. And then you realize there are limitations. And there's some things that are just out of your control. I think it's tough to admit that. You get a jump like that, you can admit it. They don't have a tarp on the field here, except for the one on the mound. Human rain delay. Two two pitch to Revere. Just a bit high. It's three and two. There's Grandel catching that breaking ball on one knee again. You're just you're boxing there. You know, it's not you a good it. it's not a good presentation for the umpire. Yeah, and you're right though, you remember Piazza. Piazza was that way. Michael P could back it up with a stick though. But that's just not giving the umpire a good look. In the dirt ball four. And now the fills are first and second. With two men down. Cesar Hernandez is coming up. Tomorrow at five, there will be plenty to talk about. Phillies insiders will discuss the announcement of Jonathan Papelbon to the National League All-Star team. Watch Philly Sports Talk Tuesday night at five only on Comcast Sportsnet. Ricky Bo tweeted out at the rate of this game, this might move right into breakfast on broad. <laughs> By the time this one ends. Yeah, this has been a long one. Well done, Ricky Bo. Well, two outs here in the top of the sixth inning. We are more than two hours into it. It's two hours and 14 minutes. We have hit Tuesday morning back home. It's not yet past uh, that young lady's bedtime. Summertime. Summertime in the big city. Or I should say the sprawling city. So Cesar tonight has two hits and three at bats. He grounded out his last time up to Howie Kendrick. That was against a uh, Sir Camp. Takes a curve ball outside one ball no strikes which Joel Peralta is not the pitcher that he used to be with the Tampa Bay Rays. Be aggressive as a hitter. You also have to be aggressive as a pitcher and attack the strike zone. He's not doing that here tonight. 2 0. Oh. Good speed on the base pass for the Phils. That one is sliced the other way, just foul. And it's 2 and 1. Two and two. It was an 89 mile an hour sinker.
2 2 pitch is popped foul behind the plate now play and it remains two balls and two strikes. Now the 2 2 again. Swing and a miss. He got him. Out on his front foot. He strikes out Cesar Hernandez. Two strikeouts for Joel Peralta. Side is retired. The Phillies lead two. We'll go to the bottom of the sixth inning here in LA. Six runs to win your free breakfast sandwich over the AM PM stretch power. Dealer.com. Buy McDonald's. Double the love it at McDonald's with a double cheeseburger and small fry for just two fifty. McDonald's. I'm loving it. And buy Toyota. Where will Toyota take you? Visit buyatoyota.com to find out. Toyota. Let's go places. Well, actor and producer Rob Reiner, who comes to Dodger games quite often, has season tickets in the house watching tonight's game between the Phils and the Dodgers. As we begin the bottom of the sixth inning, the batter is Kiki Hernandez. 268 hitter this year, three home runs, 26. I should say nine RBIs. What a pitch waved at. One ball, one strike. Sean O'Sullivan with 103 pitches after that one there. Out of the mound here at the bottom of the sixth inning. He got him. He threw. Or he got him on swinging on that one. It's one and two. He threw one pitch after another, slower and slower. To Enrique Hernandez. It's the fourth name in that eight slot I have, Tom. He's <laughs> lined foul. Side two and two.
That is an old time Phillies hat right there. Man, that Phillies hat has seen some time. Down the right field line, that'll slice out of play. That is an old one. Yeah, it sure is. He's done some work in the yard. I think he has. He's been out in the sun a little bit. Three balls, two strikes to the Dodger pinch hitter. And he hits it foul again. He's checking his bat to make sure he didn't break it. He uses a cup bat, and a lot of times, if you hit a squibber off the end, it, the tip will fracture. Might get a little chunk out of the end of that bat. Well, we've seen some extended at bats tonight. Foul ball after foul ball. He is in straight swing mode. 111 pitches now. Well, this is uh this will be the 11th pitch of this AB. You got Rollins on deck. Oh. He's not getting cheated. Pedro Baez in the bullpen for the Dodgers. Rollins. You see 19 pitches so far tonight. I think if you're Don Mattingly, you're probably pretty pleased that you're up to the bottom of the sixth inning. That ball hit the bat. And we'll do it again. He hit the barrel of the bat. I thought it hit the the, uh, the the knob at first. There's Jenmar Gomez. Gomez now lo loosening up in the pen. Uh, 114 pitches for Sean O'Sullivan. And that one's out toward right. Another foul ball. This will be pitch number 14 in this at bat. He's fouled off eight. Another indication that O'Sullivan's tiring. And strike three calls. Swing at all those pitches, and you take one for a called third strike. Leave it in the hand of the umpire. Three strikeouts for O'Sullivan. Little cutter right there. He was supposed to be a two seamer. He just kind of hooked it. It looked like it was a tad off the plate. Dang. The umpire just got a, he got lulled to sleep. He knew that <laughs> that Hernandez was in swing mode. Rollins takes a strike. Rollins tonight is 0 for 2. He's lined out and he's popped out. Side two and two. Jimmy's goal tonight was to make O'Sullivan work. He has done that. This will be the 25th pitch that he has seen. And he fouls it to stay alive. A 
it away. As you can imagine, for Sean O'Sullivan, this is his career high in pitches thrown in the big leagues, 122. His previous high was 114 when he was with Kansas City back in 2010. And the payoff pitch. And a line drive, base hit for Rollins into right field. And a one out single. Jimmy's aboard. Big Ryan Howard just said it's about time. Keep the cannons heading out to the mound. That's going to be it for Sean O'Sullivan. Gomez is warmed up in the bullpen. So Sullivan with 123 pitches in tonight's ball game. He'll leave with a runner at first. He's responsible for that base runner. So Jimmy Rollins will be aboard when we come back after pitching change. Extraordinary moments happen every night in baseball, but on one night they all happen in one place. Don't miss the 86th All-Star Game. Coverage begins at 7 p.m. Eastern, Tuesday, July 14th on Fox. Sean O'Sullivan, after five and a third and 123 pitches, is done. He allowed eight hits. Seven of those eight hits were extra base hits. He struck out three. So now it'll be Jenmar Gomez, three and three. With an earned run average of 1.59. For Gomez, his earned run average is 10th among National League relief pitchers. He's 10th, Papelbon's 11th, and Ken Giles is 19th. Phillies bullpen in Atlanta this past weekend did not allow a run. In eight and two thirds innings of work. This Gomez's numbers, 36th game. Jock Peterson, the batter, and he takes low. One ball, no strikes. Rollins did break. Rollins has been caught stealing seven times tonight. The challenge will be for Gomez to get it to the plate quickly. Gomez being predominantly a sinker ball pitcher. Balls that are a little bit lower, tougher for a catcher to throw on. They appeal, no swings. This is the third base umpire. It's 2 0. Oh. The only thing I can really think of is why the Phillies let Sean O'Sullivan throw so many pitches is the fact that at the bottom of that lineup, Sean O'Sullivan had handled them. Well, that's Even true. Jock Peterson, you know, he 0 for 3 against him, fly out, pop up, ground ball, and a strikeout. So 
That's the only thing I can think of. That's a lot of pitches. Same spot this time. It's called a strike, and it's two and one to Peterson. Phillies <laughs> staked O'Sullivan to a 6-3 lead, but he allowed that three-run home run to Yasmani Grandal in the fifth inning. Damage that Jenmar has provided with inherited runners came early on this year. Ground ball to second, that could be two. Nope, it's going to be one. Cesar tried to get rid of it quickly and did not hang on. 4 3 on the putout, and the Dodgers have a runner in scoring position now for Howie Kendrick. Now, Peterson would have been tough to double up. The goal there was just to get the lead runner. That's the thing. You somehow find a way to get that lead runner. If anything, Cesar may have tried to make this transition before he had the ball. See that hang soon. He scoops it up and gets the out at first base. And the ball just got deep on him. Right off the heel there, you can see that. And this is a hard infield. Especially the amount of sun that this field gets, it gets very hard. The ball is very quick through it. Kendrick hits it toward the hole. That's a base hit to left field. Rollins around third, heading for home. The throw by Cody Ashey is offline, and the Dodgers take the lead. That's why they want to get that lead runner. Howie Kendrick now just a home run away from the cycle. That run charged to Sean O'Sullivan, so you can close the book on Sean. Seven runs, all seven earned. And the Dodgers lead it here in the bottom of the sixth. Third baseman, number 10, Justin Turner. And how he's beaten them to right field a couple times tonight with a triple and a double. He turns on this ball, hits it out to left. I thought Cody was going to have a chance there for I a did quick too. minute. Came through that and just kind of pulled that ball as he let go of it. Yeah, Jimmy's an excellent base runner, but his turnaround third was a little wide. Yep. Turner is one for two. Outside, one and oh. That was the fourth first pitch hit for the Dodgers this evening. He said they were aggressive. Turner was looking for that sinker in. You really saw him really kind of put his foot in the bucket there. Hips flew open real quick. So I'm going to get to the sinker in. Chopper back over the mound. Mendez booted. And Kendrick will go to third. Well, it's gotten a little sloppy for the Bills here in the bottom of the sixth inning. I think they got to score that an error to somebody. I think it's going to go down as a hit. You think so? I do. And I think it should be Freddie's ball and the fact that he has momentum going towards first base. I agree. That's going to be a heck of a tough play for Cesar Hernandez there to come back across his body and make a strong enough throw to get Josh Turner out. Well, I think Cesar has to know that. And you, you talked about earlier about Kendrick and Jimmy Rollins making that transition and feeling comfortable out there with each other. You know, it's a, it's a learning process for Freddie and Cesar as well. Oh, they have scored at a base hit. Runners on first and third with two men down. 
Bob McClure with a long conversation. You see Cesar and Freddie in the back of the mound. Look how these guys have known each other since they were 13 years old. They're still chatting as they're going back to their positions. Well, I'm anxious to see what they do here with Adrian Gonzalez. They do walk him. I mean, you do still have a base open. Well, you have a guy that hit a three run home run. That's the issue. Now, he's hit a home run, too. If you're the Dodgers, do you send Kendrick? Do you want to keep that hole open? With Turner, you mean? I mean, yes, with Turner. I'm sorry. Count is even. One ball, one strike. Adrian Gonzalez selected to his fifth All Star game. Third, Franco is up with it in plenty of time. Side is retired finally. However, the Dodgers do retake the lead. An RBI single by Howie Kendrick. They lead it by one as we go to the seventh. Franco, Howard, and Ruiz when we come back. Delaware Valley Honda dealers game summaries. We go to the top of the seventh inning. Phillies have home runs from Galvis, Howard, and Herrera. Sean O'Sullivan, 123 pitches, a career high. Lasted five and a third, but he allowed seven runs. Six of those were earned. Dodgers have hit two home runs. One was a three run shot that tied it at sixth. And Howie Kendrick hits three hits, including the go ahead single at this point that scored Jimmy Rollins. Pedro Baez is the new pitcher for the Dodgers. He's one and one at 3.54 ERA. And he's on 
here at the top of the seventh to face Michael Franco. The first six innings of this game were played in nearly two hours and 50 minutes. Is that good? I don't think that's good. First pitch to Franco is up high. And one ball, no strikes. The good news is it looks like we have another quick worker out there. <laughs> By Baez hails from the Dominican Republic. Dodgers signed him as a free agent in 2007. Fastball in there, one ball, one strike. Maybe five on that fastball. He was signed as a free agent as a third baseman at a young age and never could get it together as a hitter playing third base. So that's why the Dodgers converted him to a pitcher. Outside, it's two balls and one strike. Now the scouting report has his fastball ranging from 93 to 100. When you see that, you got to sit there and say, "All right, let me watch him first to see what his fastball's at," because that's a pretty good range, 93 to 100. And that's drastic. You may think, "Well, Correct. it's only seven miles an hour." No, there's that one's lined to left field. It's deep, and it's going to take a hop off the top of the fence. Ethier's up with it. He'll loft the throw to second, and Franco pulls into second with a stand-up double, his 14th of the year. Give the Phillies offense some credit. They're not going down quietly. That's their ninth hit. Ryan Howard. One of the keys. Take advantage of them using their entire bullpen. And they have done that to a certain degree this evening. Leadoff double here helps out with Michael Franco. Good looking swing there. Short. Little El Torito action. So Howard is up. Howard is one for two. He had a three run home run back in the third. Hit by a pitch his last time up. 14 home runs, 41 runs batted in. On pace for less than 100 RBIs, but still on pace for about 80 RBIs in the season. Phillies have had their leadoff batter aboard five times tonight. They've scored three of the five times. I've not seen the end result just yet. In this sitting, they're going to throw behind Franklin. He wasn't off the bag that far. Save it. <laughs> Toyota Major League scoreboard. The Mets have defeated the Giants three nothing. Jonathan Neese gets the victory. He allows just three hits. Giants committed three errors. They are winless here in the month of July. They're 0 and 6, which is part of the reason why. The Dodgers who have struggled are still in first place by a pretty good margin and look at the Diamondbacks just a game behind the diamond behind the Giants. Here's the 1 0 pitch coming to Howard. And Howard pops it up foul out of play. And those teams just keep hanging around. I get a movie quote in there didn't I. <laughs> that was from Rounders, in case you didn't know. I didn't know that. Is that a good movie? Oh, one of the best. Really? Mm -hmm. Murph, did you ever see Rounders? I did. I just actually watched it on the bus uh, home from the uh, Yankees. Did you really? Uh, yeah, or for the Mets. Was it one of the best? It's a great movie. I had seen it once before. It's a great movie. Here's the 1 1 pitch to Ryan Howard. Foul tip, and it's 1 and 2. Murph, did you watch it on your portable DVD player? <laughs> uh, no, I didn't, because I gave that away in the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> but you're Rob Rock. DVD player. In a museum somewhere, probably, whoa, yes. Whoa, 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 whoa. 
Rob Reiner probably has one. Murph, why don't you saunter over to Rob Reiner and ask <laughs> if he has a DVD player, portable one? <laughs> I get back to you on that. You're not going to do it, are you? Nope. <laughs> one ball and two strikes to Ryan Howard. Inside, two balls, two strikes. Love for Ryan to have five RBIs on the evening. I take that. Take a two home run game. Carlos waits on deck. And now Grandal will go out to the mounds. Slowly. Slug your way to the home run derby crowd and master the free award winning game millions are playing. Download MLB.com home run derby free on the App Store and Google Play. They are going to go through some balls in the Queen City. Oh, yeah, they are. Turns on that fastball. And it remains even two and two. Bryce Harper has announced that he is not going to be part of the home run derby because his dad can't throw. His dad probably has thrown so much to him during his career. He probably just doesn't have it in him. I know the feeling. How come your dad always throws the best BP? Because you've hit so much against him. Another one fouled past Juan Samuel. Clock striking one o'clock back home. Ricky Bo could be right. <laughs> Outside, three and two. Oh, this has turned into a good at bat for Howard. Let's see if he can finish it off. Pick one out here. Oh, got him with a high fastball. So one out here in the seventh inning. Nine strikeouts for Dodger pitching. And Carlos Ruiz is coming up. Number 51, Carlos Ruiz. Oh, probably out of the strike zone. Definitely out of the strike zone. Just looks too good up there. I may have asked you this before. What was your tempo as a pitcher? Were you quick? Were you as a quick worker? Quick as I could be. Why is somebody with this kind of stuff so slow as a worker? I mean, seriously. It's just the way they are. I tried to be the same way as a catcher. You put your signs down, let's go. You know, thinking is what gets you caught from behind. Get a sign, attack. That ball is smoked foul toward the upper deck. He must hit that out of the stadium foul. <laughs> that group up there doesn't normally get foul balls. They, that one went hunting for a seat. That was really foul. 
I don't get it. I mean, some guy you can see he rubs the ball up after each pitch. I mean it's a tick you know it's. It's a habit. Uh, but I, I don't get it sometimes I really don't. I would think that you want to get it and go because you have better stuff than most guys. I mean, this guy's throwing 95, 96 miles an hour. And I'm sure it's not easy to, you know, easy to pick up. It's his time. Way outside. So two balls and one strike. And I would think whoever teaches a guy like this, you know, you, I think they want speed up rules, but I, I think you teach tempo. Well, keeps the hitter on the defensive as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Don't give him as much time to think. And Reese tried to hold. He went. Now it's two balls and two strikes. Good idea to go talk to him at this juncture. <laughs> Make sure you're on the same page. Now you've heard me tell this story before, but Mark Burley, he would start his windup before I had a, a finger down, and whatever he put down, he would grip it and throw it in middle of his windup. I don't know how he did it, but he trusted us enough to. Realized that whatever sign we put down, we thought it was the best for him. Carlos fouls that one off the mask of Grandal. That yeah. one touching 97. Yeah, I mean, I, we saw and believe we saw it with Antonio Bastardo for years. Took that one right out of his glove. We kind of said the same stuff about Bastardo, and the game is the game. Everybody has their own personalities, but. themselves busy we watch them wandering around you want to keep them on your toes as much as possible Puig's out right field with his hand on his hip ball four Boys have two on with one out Cody Ashley's coming to the plate speaking of Cody he was unfortunately on the wrong side of our Hyundai defensive play of the game. And he gets a just a hanging breaking ball here and smokes it to Adrian Gonzalez at first base. Nothing Church could do to get back, nothing Cody Ashley could do. Except sit there and wonder, why me? And that is your Hyundai defensive play of the game brought to you by your local Hyundai dealers. Well, let's see if Cody can run into a fastball here. He's one for three. And here comes Rick Honeycutt. Going out to the mound to talk to Baez. <laughs> Dodgers do not have anybody up in the bullpen just yet, but maybe this was a ploy to get somebody up and loosening. Luis Garcia is up throwing for the Phils in their bullpen. Reminder about the scouting report on on Cody Ashy or what? What hard and soft way? Like how you pitch <laughs> every other hitter? <laughs> well, we seem to be set with one out, runners on first and second here in the top of the seventh inning. 
The Phillies down 7 6. They led it 6 3 at one point. Dodgers tied it with a three run home run by Asmani Grandal. And then retook the lead in the bottom of the sixth inning on a base hit by Howie Kendrick. Franco at second base, Ruiz at first, not the fastest guys. And the pitch to Ashy. Off the outside corner, one ball and no strikes. Side again, they appeal. Oh, I didn't think he went on that one. It's one ball, one strike. Neither did I. Take a look. You may see something different. I didn't think he went there either. It's close. Did you think he went on there? the replay? I did. We're just not on the same page. No, we're not. Check swings. We don't need any booth dissension here, Tom. <laughs> One ball, one strike. That one's outside again, two and one. And the baby just woke up. My wife, she just sent me a text. She said, the baby just woke me up. She goes, is it really the seventh, top of the seventh? <laughs> the baby said that or your wife? Your <laughs> wife. Come on, Cody. Lace one in that guy. I want to see Chooch run. Upstairs. Three balls, one strike now to Ashy. Ready Galvis waits on deck. Franco leads off second. Ruiz leads off first. Three and one the count to Cody Ashy. Ball four and the bases are now loaded. There is bullpen action. J.P. Howell is starting to throw in the pen for the Dodgers. Got the switch hitting Freddie Galvis do up now. Looks like they're going to allow Galvis to bat. Whatever Honeycutt talked to him about was not executed. No. There's no way he's out there saying, all right. Be very careful about Cody Ashy because you don't want to load the bases. No, I agree with that. I mean, Cody's looked good tonight, yes, but so is Freddie Galvis, obviously. Yeah, Galvis is homer tonight. He's also struck out twice. Batting with the bases loaded, only his 18th at bat with the bases loaded. As the runners take their lead, the infield is in a little bit up the middle. Back at first, even the bag at third. And the first pitch is whack foul, and it's 1 0. I always wonder the the goal for a hitter after you see a guy throwing out free passes and being all over the strike zone. What you do in the at bat? I guess you try to center cut something because you think, all right, he's going to try to get the ball over the heart of the plate. It's something you can drive. You know, just because it's center cut, maybe that's not really where you like it. Just because it's in the middle, maybe you're looking for something more on the inner half. Inside and it's one ball and one strike. So when you're not hitting spots and you're very methodical out on the mound, you're not going to get that pitch from an umpire. You're just not. And it's not that umpires hold grudges against guys like this, but it doesn't help. I think we saw that even with Sean O'Sullivan during his outing. He needs to do is slap one here. And the Phillies will at least tie it.
In the air to right field. Going back on it is Puig. This will tie the game up. He makes the catch on the edge of the track. The throw goes to second. And Michael Franco crosses the plate. It's a 7 7 ball game. Boy, he just missed his second home run of the night. Man. And here comes Don Mattingly. And that one would have been of the four RBI variety. Not that bad pitch. Gets pretty out in front, just a hair, just a smidgen. I think if that ball's elevated a little bit more and not down so far, you may see a different outcome there. Well, we've got a pitching change. Freddie Galvis gets an RBI. It's his third RBI of the night. He's tied this ball game up at seven. We'll see if Pete McCannon will counter with the left hander coming in. Candidates have been announced for the National League and the American League. Clayton Kershaw of the Los Angeles Dodgers is one of five for the National League. Johnny Cueto of the Cincinnati Reds is on that list as well. Meanwhile, in the American League, Brett Gardner has had a very nice uh, first half of the season. He is one of the five. Xander Bogarts is the other from the Red Sox. And Brian Dozier. In fact, they were just promoting Brian Dozier at the end of the Minnesota Twins ball game. You can go to MLB.com. Or those teams respective websites and select who you want to see as part of the final vote. JP Howell being the new pitcher, he's had an excellent year, 0.37 ERA. And instead of Odubel Herrera, it will be Jeff Rancor who will pinch hit for the Phils. With two outs runners on first and third, game tied at seven. Francoeur takes way outside, it's one and zero. After Francoeur, it'll be Darren Ruff. You see what his numbers are as a pinch hitter, they've been excellent. Not an easy task. Been sitting there all night. We're three hours into this game, you got to come up, man scoring position. He is one for one against J.P. Howell during his career. And to get an RBI on that base hit. One ball, one strike. Take their lead. That one's fouled over the screen, so it's one and two. Francoeur and Andres Blanco have been the best pinch hitters for the Phillies. In fact, they've been two of the best in the National League. The Phillies as a team have the best average among pinch hitters in the National League. The 
Toss over to first. Inside did that hit Frank Cool? It takes a hop. He just missed getting hit by that pitch. I don't know how it didn't hit him, and I don't know how Grendel blocked it. <laughs> well dance it by Jeff Frank Cool. I mean that was well in that right-handed batter's box. Jeff just barely stays alive. Dodgers bullpen as a whole, 3.51 ERA. But as we alluded to before, this has not been a good month of July for them. Tonight they've allowed five runs. Five of the seven. Swing and a miss. He got it. JP Howe does his job. Strikeouts mount up for the bullpen of the Dodgers. As Jeff Francoeur goes down swinging. The Phillies do tie it up. They lead two. Time to stretch here at Dodger Stadium. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the moment we did. And the Dodgers are right back where they started, all even, in this case, seven apiece. Hi, Ron Burke and our Comcast Sports and Studios. Coming up on Sports and Central, Jalil Okafor played his first game as a sixer. We'll show you how the big man fared in his summer league debut out in Salt Lake City. We'll also examine the impact World Cup hero Carly Lloyd's performance is having on a younger generation of soccer players. All coming up following Phillies Pulse Game Live. But now we'll go back to Dodger Stadium to Tom McCarthy, Ben Davis, and Greg Murphy. All right, Ron, we appreciate that as we move to the bottom of the seventh, as you just mentioned. Jenmar Gomez will continue out on the mound. Every time the Phillies retire, the opposing team, one, two, three, Comcast will make a contribution to Phillies charities. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Xfinity, the official entertainment provider of the Philadelphia Phillies. Just saw Frank Poor stays in the game to play right. Revere moves from right to center field. And yes, Monty Grandal, who tied this game up at six with a three-run home run, leads it off. Here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Grandal is one for three. He's fly to left twice. That one's a well out to center field. Revere, he's got room. And two steps from the track makes the catch. One gone. 
Time for the Major League Notebook. Murph, take it away. All right, thank you very much, Tom. It's presented by St. Joseph's University. And a little bit of history happening in Chicago tonight. Cardinals and Cubs. And uh, John Lester uh, was no-hitting the Cardinals through six. Now, that, that's not the history because what happened was uh, he got his first Major League hit. Uh, he was current 0 for 66 yeah. in his career. <laughs> but he was able to get an infield single today. But then... Uh, unfortunately for him, the Cardinals took it to him in the seventh inning. They ended up winning that game 6 to nothing. And we told you earlier that Giancarlo Stanton uh, was a uh, starter in the All-Star game for the National League but was injured, and we didn't know who was going to take his spot. Well, that has now been announced. It will be Andrew McCutcheon from the Pirates who will start for the National League in the outfield as well. Thanks to all the folks on Twitter who sent that our way to fill up the Major League Notebook. Guys? All right, Murph. Well, we appreciate that. One ball, no strikes to Puig. He takes inside, 2-0. How's that seat down there, Murph, uh, next to the Phillies dugout? Yes, this seat is terrific. Yeah? Yeah. It's, it's, it's probably the best seat in the house. Really? Yeah. Well, I, got a, I have a TV in front of me. Oh, you do? What are you watching? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> are you watching a movie? Uh, I, I can't answer that. Oh, okay. Honestly. How many bags of seeds have you gone through, Murph? Uh, we've, we've, we've had some seeds down here. We've got water. We've got some gum. Well, that's a good diet. It's two and one. Thankfully, the seat is comfortable. Oh, is it a cushion seat? It is a cushion seat. You make it friends down there? Always. Ground screws right next to you. You want to whisper in their ear and ask them if there's rain coming? Is that why they're there? <laughs> I think they're just going to do a little maintenance. Oh, okay. <laughs> Two balls, one strike. And Puig pulls it into left. That'll be a base hit. out of the box. I mean, speeding out of the box. If there was a bobble, he was going to be at second base. The filler, number 16, Andre Ethier. And now Andre Ethier will be the hitter. Ethier is doubled tonight. He's grounded out. Time for a two play. Perfect candidate for it. If there is a double play possibility, if you're Galvis or Hernandez, you got to get rid of it quickly because Puig is going to be coming in like a freight train. I don't wish that upon anybody. Alberto Cayaspo is out in the on deck circle to pinch hit. Pitcher spot is the eight hole. Fouled away, it's one and two. It in. Yeah, that's something important for Jim Mar Gomez to do. The simple fact that he is a sinker ball guy. And if you can change the eye level from time to time, just to get him off that, just to get him off looking down, down, down. His change ups down, slider down. Sinker obviously going to be down. Well, ideally, you want it to be right. down. But if you can just change that eye level just slightly, get him off that pitch down, you might be able to get him to pull off a pitch. It's sharply and it eats up Franco into left field. 
Puig will stop at second base. The Dodgers have first and second with one man down. And here comes Kiaspo. They have scored that. Well, they haven't scored it yet. That ball took an odd hop at the end. Michael was hit so hard to let it play him. They get now they have scored at a base hit. One thing that does happen on the grass here at Chavez Ravine is a lot of moisture on the on the grass at night. Remember, you always would walk out through center field to get to the buses right after the game, and you would get to and you walk out of the dugout and go through center field to get on the bus. And your feet would be soaking wet. I mean soaking wet. By the time you got out there, dampness just comes in. And it's a little cold here at night. The temperature right now is in the uh, 63 degrees. So the total pitches thrown tonight: 145 for the Phillies, 145 for the Dodgers. After Bob McClure goes out to the mound to talk to Jenmar Gomez, Alberto Cayaspo will be the batter. Cayaspo started the year with the Braves. They weren't all too happy with him. So they traded him out here to Los Angeles and they got Juan Uribe. They're much happier now in Atlanta. And the first pitch somehow is called a ball. It's one and zero. Oh. And Kiosko, because of the deal that he signed, initially said, no, I'm not going. Signed a one year deal for three million dollars. And yeah, he was the holdup. It was surprising though that he wouldn't want to come back to Southern California and play for a first place team. Low two and up. People clamoring for it, but that young man was able to pull it out of the air. Watch it. Here we go. One hand, too. One handed. Useful. The Dodgers have had runners in scoring position every inning. Every inning. So you're saying be thankful that it's they've only scored seven tonight? Hopefully we can keep saying that. Yeah, Jimmy Rollins waits on deck. It's three and one. To Kiaspo. A little number in front of the plate. Gomez scoops it up. Runners do move up to second and third, and Jimmy Rollins will be the batter. Well, you know what's going through Jimmy Rollins' head right now. He can say all he wants about it. He's trying to stay focused on what he's doing with the Dodgers. But to him, a base hit here, and the opportunity to give the Dodgers the lead again, it's probably something that he would. He would turn pretty sweet. His former double play partner Chase Utley looks on. Rollins singled his last time up and he scored the seventh run of the night for the Dodgers. Inside and it's one ball and no strikes. Talk about Jimmy Rollins, how many pitches he's seen tonight. The most pitches he's seen in a nine inning game in his career is 37. It's June 13, 2008 at St. Louis. The Phillies won that ball game 20 to 2. All right, so he's at 28 then tonight? Mm -hmm. 
One ball, no strikes. And he lines one into left field, a base hit. One run is in. Here comes Ethier. The throw to the plate by Ashey. A little offline. Ruiz can't handle it. It'll be a two-run single for Jimmy Rollins, of all people. He's just given the Dodgers a two-run lead over the Phillies here in the bottom of the seventh inning. always been a spectacularly good red light player. The red light was on. And that's the swing I was talking about earlier. Jimmy pulling all pitches when he's not going well. He's not using the whole field. Jimmy not trying to do a whole lot. You can see that swing was effortless. Not trying to do a whole lot. That ball was smoked to left field. It's just a good swing. You know, hindsight is always 2020. But you're thinking, Jimmy is known for the dramatic. Well, maybe that's the situation where we put him on. They've done, they've handled Jock Peterson very well tonight. Well, he's 0 for 4, and he swings at the first pitch and pops it up into foul territory. Franco and Ruiz, and they're out of room, and it's 0 and 1. Three RBIs tonight for Jimmy Rollins. Jenmar Gomez's 13 inning scoreless streak has come to a close. It was a career high as he's allowed two runs to score here in the bottom of the seventh inning. The 0-2 pitch coming to Peterson. He fouls it back. Boy, he nearly got that one. And it remains no balls and two strikes. He's the only starting position player that has not had a hit this evening. Pitches for Jenmar Gomez. Phillies will have Gomez leading things off in the top of the eighth inning and then the top of the order. So it'll be Gomez, Revere, and Hernandez. Probably be Andres Blanco that will pinch hit. Phillies are going to have to muster some more offense. They trail it now by two thanks to Jimmy Rollins. Way inside, two and two. Rollins. Singled and scored in the sixth inning, drove in two runs just now here in the seventh inning. So he's two for four with a run scored in two RBIs. There's Blanco and Ruff. I don't like to make excuses, but Jim Margona sat in that dugout for a long, long time. And going into that pitching change where Hal came in, it was at 16 minutes before that pitching change. A long time. Just outside. Three and two. 
Yes, he should have made better pitches. But when he's sitting there for a while, it's. Second, but Rollins will score on an RBI double by Jack Peterson. It's now 10 to 7 Los Angeles. Those are the hardest hit balls of the night. That ball was stolen. 14 hits by the Dodgers. It's just a high slider. So Howie Kendrick is the batter. He's got a triple, a double, a single, just a home run. Short of the cycle right now. Um, for any player, particularly the all-time hits leader of one franchise, getting a chance to face that franchise after being dealt in a trade. To do what Jimmy Rollins has done here tonight has to feel good. Pete Cannon's out. He's going to make a double switch. So Blanco's going to come into the ball game. As a position player, and Justin DeFreitas will come on to face Howie Kendrick. So a pitching change for the Phils here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Three runs are in. That's amazing. It's a The crowd is a very nice video montage of Tommy up on the big board. Andres Blanco comes on to play shortstop as part of a double switch. And Justin DeFreitas will be the new pitcher. DeFreitas 0 1 with a 5.04 earned run average. Jenmar Gomez has been so good for the Phillies. And he's allowed three runs here tonight. And the runner at second base is his responsibility. Howie Kendrick is now the batter. Kendrick, as we said, a home run shy of the cycle. Takes it side, one ball, no strikes. That's Jack Peterson. Goes out of second base after an RBI double. And Yasiel Puig have been talking for a while. They talk, were talking before the break. They were talking during the break, and now they continue to talk. It's the last Dodger cycle, Orlando Hudson. 
O dog. O dog. Over toward the hole. Blanco has it. Long throw over to first. Won't be in time. That'll be another base hit. Fourth hit of the night. First and third for the Dodgers. 15 hits for Los Angeles this evening. Of the 15, eight have been extra base hits. What do we got going on here in this conversation, Ben? I think Jimmy's trying to recruit Yasiel to come play for the Raiders. <laughs> I don't know, but this is an in-depth conversation. A 40, I think Jimmy's a 49ers fan. Is he? Yeah, I think so. Despite being from Oakland? Yeah. Really? I think he is. I could be wrong. I don't know, but that is in-depth. I mean, they've been going at it in there. Well, Jimmy did talk today during his press conference about how important it was for him to help the younger players. Part of what his role is. Some of the other teammates, look at JP Howell. And some of the others, they're kind of soaking in what he's saying. Down low, one ball, one strike. I talking to about his at bat and the fact that he got that slider. He was a little bit out in front of it, but he stayed through it enough and just shot it over shortstop for a hit. And he's the one that got things started. You know, he looks. You talk about the at bat before that, where Sullivan got or Sullivan got him to swing over the sinker earlier in the ball game. Just from their hand gestures, that's what I can look at. I miss those conversations in the dugout. Swing and a miss. He got him. That conversation may continue as they both walk out to their positions. Nonetheless, Jimmy Rollins has given the Dodgers the lead here in the seventh inning. An opposite field two-run single. Line drive that scored two. They went on to score one more. They lead it 10 7 as we go to the top of the eighth. Now or visit jefferson.edu and by nissan choose nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever shop nissan.com phillies trail it by three as we go to the top of the eighth inning adam libertor the left-hander is the new pitcher uh, for los angeles well there's been a lot to cheer about there's been a lot to be frustrated about if you're a phillies fan out here watching from dodger stadium Libertor will face uh, Andres Blanco to start things off. To 
in the returns numbers two and one a three point zero nine ERA. Manny Gonzalez the home plate umpire just peeked back at. The press box because the music was still playing. Blanco hitting 278 this year. He has 20 base hits. One ball, no strikes. Blanco one at a time was not granted by Gonzalez. And it's even one and one. That fastball and it's one ball and two strikes. Just threw that one right by him. Yes, he did. It was like Whitey well, was looking for something middle in and just got beat badly away. That one is floated out over the head of Kendrick for a base hit, and Blanco's aboard. Here in the top of the eighth inning. It's just stupid. The pitch? Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it doesn't make any sense. Did Grundell not see that swing before that? Yeah, then did the not, soft. Did he not see that swing? I mean, it's not a terrible pitch, but it's something he could at least get his bat head out to. You know, I just I don't understand that. He threw 95. I mean, completely by him. Lucky he didn't take out Murph over there next to the dugout. And Revere has been on base twice. First pitch is down low. It's one ball and no strikes. No block goes at first base. Very happy for Andres though. 21st hit of the year. He has had a solid season as the Phillies uh, best pinch hitter. And ben takes a strike 21. Not a surprise there. Double play pitcher. Outside, two and one. Been a very weird strike zone tonight. It's been somewhat tight. That works in the favor of Ben Revere. There's a lot of reasons why this game is going to be four hours old. The strike zone is one of them, but there's a lot of other reasons that are probably more uh, evident. Three balls, one strike. A lot of pitches thrown, a lot of homers, a lot of walks, a lot of extra base hits. Eight extra base hits for the Dodgers of their 15. The pitchers they just don't have a a good pace out there. Revere fouls it away. And it's now three balls and two strikes. Nobody out here in the top of the eighth inning. Safe to say, there's more sound effects here than any other stadium. Yes. Do you agree with that? Yes. Is it always that way when you're a player too? Loudest music. Oh yeah, that's know that. They have like Shea Stadium like speakers out in center field. Shea used to have a lot of loud speakers. Good hitters background here though. 
Chopper out toward the hole. Rollins will get to it. They'll flip the second for one. That's all they'll get. So they force out Blanco. 6 4 on the put out. Fielder's choice. Phillies have family packs that are offered for select weekend dates at Citizens Bank Park. You get four tickets, four Hatfield hot dogs, and four Cokes for $100. It's a great value for any family. Order your tickets now by going to phillies.com. You can also check out phillies.com for those select dates. Understand those uh, family packs are going pretty well. Here's Cesar Hernandez, who is two for four. Inside, 1 0. and no strikes. Ball that came over the inside corner at 94. Two and one to Cesar. 17 runs, 25 hits tonight for the teams combined. Cesar fouls it back. It's two and two. These two teams will be back at it again tomorrow. Here at Dodger Stadium. This is the first of four. We'll be back on the air later on today at 10 o'clock Eastern time. So you asked me what I was going to do tomorrow? Uh, yeah, what are you going to do tomorrow? It's sleeping is <laughs> my first. That ball's off the glove of Grandal. Revere had a late start. The throw to second is not in time. It'll be a wild pitch. Well, you should sleep. A little time difference, though. It's not easy to sleep in. No, it's not. They've scored that a pass ball. So that is the eighth pass ball. That's a lot of pass balls, isn't it? It Midway is. Through the year? It's a lot. Does that frustrates you as a catcher when you got you had a pass ball? I never had one. Ever? They were all wild pitches. <laughs> <laughs> scored wrong? Um, scored incorrectly? Well, I, I didn't like I didn't like when I got charged for a pass ball and I got crossed up. I didn't like that. Well, that's when they should ask you though. Well, you have to give it to somebody. You just can't say. No, I'm saying know, that it's the pitcher's could, fault. But they could ask after the game. Right. Revere's not tagging up as Puig fires in. Two outs. Your baseman number seven, Michael Franco. So Michael Franco will be the batter with two away. Great move by Revere, right? Not not tagging yeah, there. No reason to. He's in scoring position. Yeah, I, and it's still a pet peeve of mine is when they say, "Oh, that's a pass ball," you know, and balls in the dirt, or you know, just watching a ball game with folks, and they say, "Oh, that's another pass ball." So, no, it's a wild pitch. Is that when you look back to the uh, press box and raise your hands, give a sneer, say, "Really?" Michael doubled his last time up, came around to score. 10-7 Dodgers on top here in the top of the eighth inning. Yeah. 
inside. One and zero. Number two, really making a concerted effort to pound right-handers in with fastballs. I like that. And the thing that you like about it is that he's he's getting them in. It's not like he's trying to get them in and they're staying out over the plate. He's getting them in. Here's the one ball, no strength pitch coming to Michael Franco with a runner at second. Way outside, two and zero. Oh. Then if he can control that pitch, you're going to have a lot more success with that changeup. He's he's not like he's throwing. 88 89. He's still in 94 95. Yeah, he's got some gas. He's got Howard on deck. And obviously, first base is open, but you don't want to bring the tying run to the plate here in the eighth inning. Nicked him. Thought I heard it nick him. Like Frank Coor earlier in the game. I don't know how he got out of the way of that one. <laughs> well, we have reached uh, 2 a.m. Eastern Time, 11 p.m. local time. Man. Three balls, no strikes. Runner at second. Outside ball four. He was kind of working around him there, wasn't he? You think he was working around him? Or you just think I'm, it's up, I'm up three runs. I don't know. Well, I'm with you. I wouldn't do it either. I throw 95. I'm up three runs. Well, that's got to fall on the catcher a little bit, too. Kenley Jensen, the closer for the Dodgers, is starting to throw in the pen. Rick Cunningham out to the mound. Well, Ryan Howard way back in the third inning hit this bomb. Hanging breaking ball. Officer Camp. That ball got out of there. Three run Jack. Well, and give uh, Sir Camp a little bit of credit. After that home run, he allowed a solo shot, but he still was able to get uh, three and a third in tonight. So the meeting is over. Howard will stand in. He is the tying run here in the top of the eighth inning. She's fading. And expecting also. snow. She's <laughs> going to say she's also cold. <laughs> Redditors take their lead. Kendrick is in shallow right field. And a fastball fouled away. It's 0 and 1. Good one to hit, good swing. It's the hair late. Side, one ball, one strike. Center field. This one's going to stay in the yard. Peterson is under it. He just got that one in. And the side is retired. No runs. One hit. And two men left. Middle of the eighth. Dodgers lead it by three.
Mets' performance against the Dodgers. Pure Auto Insurance presents Phillies Post Game Live coming up after this ball game. I just texted Marshall and Ricky. I said, how you boys doing? <laughs> Marshall said, Ricky's okay. <laughs> Ricky said, he's really angry. <laughs> well, how much coffee Ricky's drank tonight. Ricky will be fine. Here's Adrian Gonzalez to lead it off against Justin DeFreitas. All right, this ball game is just about officially four hours old. Gonzalez pulls it into the shift. Cesar Hernandez is up with it. And there's one away. Catcher number nine, Yasmani Grandal. Yasmani Grandal will be the batter. Tonight's first pitch was thrown at 7 10 officially. So we are uh, at 11 06 local time. That's Monty Grandal, the three run home run back to the fifth inning. Swings at the first pitch. That one's fouled over the dugout. Dow swings through that one. It's one ball and two strikes. Freitas has uh, some pretty good life on his pitches here in this outing. Yasiel Puig after the advice from Jimmy Rollins. We'll see what happens with this at bat. Once Grandal is done, he takes outside. It's three and two. More like a synopsis more than advice. Yeah. And that was lengthy. You could write a thesis statement based on what he said. There's a dribbler foul. This nine inning game this year in Major League Baseball is four hours and 16 minutes. We are at 357 right now. 3 2 pitch coming to ground out. He fouled away. It remains 3 and 2. This is the longest game for the Phillies time wise uh, of this year. Ball four and Grandal is aboard. A one out walk here in the eighth inning. Yasiel Puig. Yasiel Puig will be the hitter. We got a little ruckus going on next to you. What's going on? Somebody not giving a little kid a ball? Well, not only is he not giving the little kid the ball, he 
ran three rows up and grabbed it basically out of the kids hands. Really? So now the crowd is chanting give it to the kids. Big swing and a miss it's one and one. All right it looks like he's going to give it to the young lady. Yeah that was about five minutes too late. Nice job by the mom to tell her to say go say thank you. Rob Reiner helping out. Meathead is always there to help out. One ball, one strike to Puig. And there's a strike. It's one and two. Good pitch there. Good luck hitting that one. Dallas caught between first and seconds. Somebody should be able to catch him. He's a catcher. No offense, Ben. And Blanco no tags taken. him out. So there are two outs. What he's thinking there. I'm not sure what he's thinking either. I don't know if he had a vision or something. Ball two strikes to Puig. A high fly ball down the right field line. Frank Poor near foul territory makes the catch and the inning is over. So the Phils will have one final chance as we go to the top of the ninth inning. They trail it by three, down ten to seven. Delivery of the game. Well, it took a little while for Jimmy Rollins to arrive in tonight's ball game, but he certainly has arrived. And he had bat before that hits a single to right field, but goes down and hits the sinker the other way. Very nice job of hitting. Not trying to do a whole lot. Nice easy swing. Ball still jumped off his bat. That enabled the Dodgers to get a two-run lead and the two go-ahead runs of the ball game. And that is your WB Mason delivery of the game. Well, the Phillies will try to erase that. Here in the top of the ninth inning, Kenley Jensen is the closer. He's on to pitch for the Dodgers. Pitch to Ruiz is taken low. Oh, the 
inside corner. It's one and one. This guy is one tough customer. He is. Former catcher. Yep. 1.93 ERA. 32 strikeouts. He's lost a little bit of velocity. As you see guys do that. Predominantly throw cutter after cutter. Well, there's the last four hour nine inning game for the Phils. 408 in April of 2014 against the Rockies. Up and away. And it's three and one. And he used to be legit 97-98 with still cut. Cody Ashley waits on deck. Our official time is 4.05. And there's ball four. So a base runner for the Phillies here in the ninth. They need to get one more on to bring the tying run of the plate. Both these managers are aging before our eyes. Cody Ashi. Donald Arthur didn't even need glasses when this one started. <laughs> Pete Buchanan had dark hair. Ashy is one for three. And it's 0 and 1. He hasn't been in the league for that long, but a lot of velocity to lose in a short amount of time. That one's off the hands. It loops in the right field. A base hit. Cody Ashy has another hit. So that one still got in a little bit, but it was only at 89. And when he was at 95 to 98, that's that bat's in 10 pieces. Good job of hitting there by Cody. Cody's looked very good tonight. Well, now Dominic Brown will come on as a pinch hitter. Dominic Brown. Dominic pinch hitting for Justin DeFreitas. And he fouls the first pitch back. It's 0 and 1. Kenley Jansen's had foot problems during his career. He's had heart issues during his career. In fact, foot surgery caused him to get started this season rather late. Runners lead off first and second. And yeah, that's low. One ball, one strike. Well, you can see he's a big man. You get your dog start barking. That is not good. Mm in there and it's two and two we officially have tied the longest game in Phillies history we showed you when it was it was against Colorado in last April four hours and eight minutes I'm not really sure what Manny Gonzalez is doing as he walks out from behind home plate he looked like he was upset about something it's two balls and two strikes to Dominic Brown the runners take their lead and a strike three call for him. He hasn't been calling that pitch a strike all night. But too close to take with two strikes. And Brown is down looking. Grindel set up on the outside corner. A lot of umpires won't give you this, but he's set up on the inside corner. I'm sorry, the pitch really backs up. That's a ball. It's supposed to be a cutter in. No, oh, that's no, let me correct that. That's a strike. If from that angle, that's over the plate. That looks like it's on the edge. 
But a lot of umpires, if they see you reach for a pitch, yeah. And sometimes if you're set up to an extreme like Grandel was on the inside corner there, see you reach, they won't give it to you. Here's Frank Core swing and a miss. It's 0 1. This is officially the longest game in Philadelphia Phillies history. The Phillies and the Dodgers on this date, well, two different dates, July 6th and 7th, depending on where you are in the country. It's no balls in one strike. We're at four hours and nine minutes right now. And it's fouled back to our right. And it's 0 and 2. Balls two strikes to Frank Core. High in the air to left field. Ethier is back. He's showing us it's going to stay in the yard. He makes the catch of their two outs. Two outs, two on. Talk about hitting the bottom of it. Good swing. He just caught the bottom of the baseball. Barreled it. But cut the bottom. So now Andres Blanco, who is one for one, came out as part of a double switch, singled his first time up. Trying to keep this inning alive. That pitch is in there. Cutter, it's 0 and 1. Does have some lateral movement. It does. And we have to see pretty much the flight of the ball the whole way in the home plate. It has some some right to left on it. 45,180 on hand tonight to watch this one. 0 oh and 2 at the knees to Andres Blanco. There's a word with Manny Gonzalez. This four hour 11 minute game is down to its final strike its final out here at the top of the ninth inning the Phillies trail it by three Andres Blanco represents the tying run and now time is called. O2 pitch. Swing and a miss. He got him. After four hours and 12 minutes, the Los Angeles Dodgers have defeated the Phillies 10 to 7 as Kenley Jansen blows a fastball by Andres Blanco to wrap up the top of the ninth inning. In the ninth, no runs, one hit, two men left for the Phillies. They outlast the Dodgers, outlast the Phillies here tonight. Howie Kendrick. Is our Chevrolet player of the game four for five a double a triple two singles an RBI and two runs scored. Jimmy Rollins. Provided a two run base hit that gave the Dodgers the lead for good. And they walk away with a 10 7 victory over the Phillies. So game one goes to the Dodgers on this road trip. We'll be back to wrap things up here at Dodger Stadium right after this.